Hey everybody, Andrew TV here, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the final video for Thornton Hills Zoo here. So yeah, today we're going to go ahead and do the final tour video there of the, uh, as completed as it's going to be, uh, Thornton Hills Zoo there. There's always, you know, something else you can do uh, to a project, another little bit of detail, another plant, another building, whatever uh, that you can do, but I'm, I'm calling it done as of uh, right now. So yeah, we're going to do a one last final look around the entire zoo zoo there. So yeah, this is not going to be just the new stuff that I've been building in the last uh, week or so, but uh, it's going to be the entire zoo. Um, so yeah, definitely sit back, relax, because it's going to take uh, just a little while there. I did the tour on a live stream um, a little bit ago before a lot of the new stuff was in, um, and it took about an hour and a half. Now that was on a live stream, so I do stop a lot to kind of talk to chat and all that kind of fun stuff, but it could take upwards of an hour. So yeah, this is a full-scale project. If this is your first time uh, checking out the series, there's an entire uh, playlist of over a year and a half, just about. Uh, it wasn't a full year and a half of building, but uh, yeah, overall about a year and a half of uh, building in uh, Thornton Hill Zoo there that you can go ahead and uh, check back and watch and everything there. So, uh, but yeah, let's not waste too much time. Um, you know, let's go ahead and uh, check out the full tour. And as we go through, I'll definitely be thanking a bunch of people along the way, a lot of guest builders and um, blueprint makers and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we'll be doing that along the way. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, give a start here. Oh, and just to let y'all know, I am getting about, I'm not gonna pause the zoo during this whole time because it just looks better with the animals moving around. Um, so I'm getting about 15-ish uh, frames per second. So if you're wondering, dang, my YouTube videos, no, it's not your YouTube video at all. It's definitely uh, my game there because, again, Thornton Hill Zoo is full, 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 full. So let's head down the main drive here. Let's call it Thornton Hill Zoo Drive or something like that, right? The Zoo Drive or something like that. I noticed that a lot, um, around a lot of real-world zoos, uh, the road or the uh, main intersection next to the zoo will usually be called like Zoo Drive or yeah, the name of the zoo uh, way or something like that. So, But anyways, here is our big parking lot and entranceway here so um but yeah the parking lot so fun quick story about that so i originally filled this with a bunch of uh blueprint cars cars and buses and such um stuff like that it looks really really cool i'm actually have a few photos of it and hopefully i remember to put some here here drew put pictures here maybe if i like do that enough i'll remember to do it <laughs> uh, but anyways yeah i put a bunch of cars in there it looked really cool and really uh fleshed out and everything but the only problem was uh, after i did that i wasn't able to load into thornton hill zoo anymore i had um i finished the entire zoo and the last thing i did was put in some cars and then yeah the cars basically crashed the zoo and i gave it around to a bunch of different content creators i ran it on uh, g4 streaming through their supercomputers. um but yeah essentially just nothing was going to work the I, I finally killed it i killed uh, planet zoo in thornton hill zoo here uh with the addition of hundreds of cars there but so at least i got the picture evidence but unfortunately i had to go back through and redo a lot of stuff there which is why this video this tour is coming out uh, probably about a week uh later than i'd like it to uh be there but anyways there's the main parking lot main little uh pond area there a little natural uh pond and everything that guests could i guess kind of hang out in i uh, would like to have put some implied um geese and mallards and stuff in there we kind of forgot but that's all right we're moving on it's all done so here's some of the new stuff over here it was really quick wanted to add in a bus stop there so yeah that's just a quick little uh bus stop just quickly added in there but the other really cool thing and uh, the first shout out to wyatt andrews there's gonna be a lot of shout outs to wyatt andrews during this uh tour here but uh first one here is for this custom map uh that they went ahead and made there and look at this this is so cool so yeah i definitely went ahead and uh, put these all over the zoo there so uh, as you tour the zoo if you ever get lost you can just kind of look for one of these maps and you can actually kind of tell where you're at so here you go here's the bus stop right where we're at right there here's the main entrance building but Oh uh, yeah, just overall, uh, he did it up uh, just perfectly. It looks amazing. So yeah, big shout out to Wyatt Andrews for the map there. And also, big shout out next to Carlos, Carlos G, for doing up the newer uh, entrance building and uh, entranceway. So yeah, this is the uh, more modern uh, entranceway. There was a older original version. And you, again, if you go back in the... Uh, the history of Thornton Hill Zoo and everything, the first few episodes, uh, you'll see the original entrance way over uh, that way. But anyways, our Carlos had a great idea for this entrance building there. 
so went ahead and let him uh, come in and do it up there. So big shout out to Carlos there. And uh, also did the interior as well. So if you haven't seen this, just, oh, look at this. <laughs> it's always amazing. You know, it's always um, all the guest builders. Uh, are you all right? We're doing a jargon in place thing? All right, we're, we're better. Um, but yeah, it's always amazing to come in and see the uh, guest builders uh, builds. You know, it still just kind of blows me away that this is still in a project that I've uh, done up there. So yeah, it's just uh, really, really uh, awesome to uh, use some amazing guest builders. Uh, in your projects. Um, so cool. Let's go ahead and move on forward into the zoo a little bit more. I might do a little bit of an abridged version, a little bit of a Spark Notes uh, version of the tour here. I do encourage you to uh, definitely download the zoo and check it out for yourself um, to get all the nooks and crannies and details and everything there. There will definitely be a uh, download link in the uh, description down below and everything so uh but yeah as we come in here here's your kind of main it's not really an open plaza we wanted to keep that really wooded feel because the uh, thornton hill zoo is kind of located in the middle of a woods a, a big old forest that they've been kind of carving out uh carving the zoo into and everything uh so yeah really really uh, dense uh, woods as you kind of come in here we'll head to the right and then swing back around to the first animals and everything but here you have your uh modern gift shop um, I based this off a building in Seattle, I believe. Maybe even a, a building in the Seattle Zoo or something like that. But yeah, there's your uh, zoo gifts and guest services. Uh, here's a the first big restaurant, nice sit-down restaurant called the, what did they name it? Called the Conci... Uh, Conci... <laughs> dang it. Conciandere. Conciandere. <laughs> you have to kind of sing it, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, I kind of built the shell for this building. And that's about the time that I kind of lost some inspiration. And Wyatt Andrews uh, came in and redid a lot of things when he built the big ol' aquarium, which got a lot of attention from the community there. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, came in and redid a lot of the, the shell for the restaurant there, the Consendieri. <laughs> I think I have it right. Um, but yeah, so there's the big sit-down restaurant there, and as we head over to the uh, mentioned Sheets Aquarium that uh, Wyatt built, um, I built these kind of shade structures here. Kind of thought it fit in nicely with the a uh, little bit of the revamp of Thornton Hill Zoo. That's the kind of thing with Thornton Hill Zoo, is that it's kind of a mixture of both worlds, where the uh, zoo is kind of going through a, I'd imagine, a like a decades-long uh, master plan or something like that. So part of the zoo is kind of redone up really, really nicely, and then the other parts of it is more of the classic area. And Wyatt even uh, mentioned it on the map that it's like the classic zoo or something like that. So there's definitely areas of the zoo that are in need of redo and um, are probably going to be getting a redo very soon. And then other parts that you can see have been kind of going through this uh, quote-unquote like master plan over the last decade or two there. Uh, so anyways, all that being said, uh, this entrance area definitely is more modern and uh, a lot more... Uh, the, these, I love the running in place going on over here, but... So anyways, yeah, I really like these uh, shade structures um, that I built up a long time ago there and uh, fit really nicely with the Sheets Aquarium over here. And yes, again, um, this is by uh, Wyatt Andrews did up this entire area, even that back area over there. So uh, yeah, here's the shell of Sheets Aquarium. Also redid the flamingo habitat that we have over here. And now that we have mods out and stuff, I'd, <laughs> I would totally come back here. Uh, but again, I'm not going to, it's just like thinking out loud. Uh, put in all of Leaf's new um, flamingos there, but it's awesome looking with the uh, flamingo pond there. So we'll head on in real quick, and then we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit to the uh, other exit or enclosures that we have missed there. But let's head on in. We're actually going to boop the lights off. Beep, there we go. And kaboom! There we go, inside of... Ooh, nice and dark in here. Uh, there we go. Uh, inside of the Sheets Aquarium, named after Mike Sheets, the awesome builder in Planet Coaster and Planet Build... Or Planet Builder, Planet Zoo there. They should just release a game called Planet Builder where it combines uh, both the games and everything like that. But uh, regardless, yeah, I love this. The mango, uh, mango Grove over there, the kelp forest, um, all the uh, fish hanging from the ceiling and everything. It just looks perfect, right? It looks just like an um, aquarium and everything there. So very, very cool there. Let's head on out turn the lights back on as we take a look at the back area which whoa lights on <laughs> and here we have this awesome looking uh, garden and uh, seal enclosure there so this was built obviously before the uh, um, aquatic pack came out because these are implied seals over there and I have tried a few times and I should have taken them up on his offer because he offered to come in here and uh, redo it um, redo it up to have the actual seals in there. Never took them up on it. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I love this back area there. And even with the implied seals and everything, I think it looks uh, really, really nice uh, still. So and there's even an interior over here, of course, right? Of course, of course. As we come in here, boom! Got a lot of inspiration from this after he built this up. Uh, used this interior for a lot of inspiration for future uh, interiors as well. And you get this really cool 
almost a backstage look uh, here. We get right up to the glass with the uh, implied seals there. So it looks really, really cool. And then uh, also right over here in the do not enter, this kind of leads to a keeper uh, area where the keepers can come down the stairs here and get right up, or maintenance or whoever, you know, and get right up in there with the uh, the seals and stuff like that. Or I think they're sea lions, possibly. Can't remember. But anyways, th those. <laughs> uh, cool. So let's go ahead and kind of backtrack there. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. We have to look at the penguins, right? Almost missed the penguins, which these, again, same story as the uh, seals there where he built this all before the aquatic pack came out. Um, and this one especially, I tried to get this to work out with our penguins. Uh, and this one especially is a little bit difficult to uh, get the keeper door uh, in and everything to make it work. Uh, to make it work right, that is, to get the penguins in there without it looking uh, kind of weird. And it's just a small little cramped area. But again, I think it looks really good with the implied uh, penguins, either by Drock or ZZ there. Because, uh, yeah, they do a great job with their implied animals. So, and, uh, and yeah, overall, just really, really great job from uh, Wyatt Andrews doing up basically um, this, you know, the restaurant there, uh, completing it, and doing up the entire uh, aquarium and sea uh, lion or seals area. <laughs> awesome. So, oh, and also, he did uh, at the same time the African jungle sign uh, over this way. So we'll be heading over there in just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I forgot he did the uh, African jungle uh, revamped sign. I just had, um, I don't think I had anything over there really, uh, to be honest with you. So, uh, but cool, let's go ahead and head off from the noisy flamingos. They're always so noisy, right? It's awesome though. They add so much ambiance uh, to the uh, zoo there. Uh, passing by another zoo sign. So if you got lost from the entrance way or the bus station uh, to the entrance here, you can uh, definitely find your way back. I don't know how you get lost, but somehow you get lost. Uh, but anyways, let's go over here where we missed out on two enclosures. And these are kind of the first enclosures uh, you get in the zoo. So we have the sable antelope here. There you go. Big old uh, sable antelope uh, enclosure there. And uh, um, big shout out to, it was on the workshop. I can't remember now who made it there, but I've been using this uh, shade structure a lot in a bunch of different projects. Um, but yeah, that was on the workshop. If you type in shade structure, but definitely be able to find that there. But the uh, shade structure goes between the caribou and the uh, the sable antelope there. And they kind of both use the uh, shade structure between them both. But yeah, they both have kind of similar uh, hillside type um, enclosures there. Kind of took inspiration. I think it was from the LA Zoo, if I remember right. They had uh, two shared enclosures that were similar. Here's a over the top view. Uh, yeah, sh uh, shared similar uh, enclosures there that kind of had some nice hillside uh, vibes to them there. So yeah, that's kind of technically the first animals. But overall in the big entrance area, here's your uh, look at the entrance, the gateway uh, there. So you get the flamingos, the aquarium, the seals and everything, the two enclosures there. So you get a nice amount of uh, animals as you come in there. So cool, let's go ahead and, ooh, you know, I didn't even plan this. <laughs> I didn't even think of this really, uh, plan out ahead where to go. We're gonna go left to right. So it's gonna be classic zoo to Africa. So let's go ahead and head on down to the sable antelope. We're gonna head left into, and this isn't really technically classic zoo. This is kind of its own little uh, thing here. Let's head into seal Cove, and this is all about the aquatic pack there. And that's the cool thing about uh, Thornton Hill Zoo is that you're going to see sections of this zoo as Planet Zoo has evolved over time. So when their Australia pack came out, built an Australia section. When the aquatic pack came out, built the Seal Cove and uh, Penguin uh, enclosures and stuff like that. When the South America uh, pack came out, you know, you get the picture there. So uh, yeah, you kind of uh, see the evolution of Planet Zoo uh, in Thornton Hill Zoo here. So that's pretty neato speedo there. But yeah, here's your big look at uh, so get down. It's always Nakadra. <laughs> I don't know, it always happens. It seems like there's always some random seal or something that's <laughs> always stuck somewhere, but uh, anyways, they're moving good. Uh, anyways, here is Seal Cove there, and yeah, this was all built during the Aquatic Pack pre-release there. I was fortunate enough to get a, uh, a key for the Aquatic Pack early, and I got about a week or two, but yeah, I think about a week to build out Seal Cove and the Penguin Encounter over there. But yeah, really, really like uh, how this turned out there. Got to use the Aquatic Pack rocks, or the, yeah, the Aquatic Rocks uh, for the first time, which was just like mind-blowing um, at the time. Y'all remember when the Aquatic Rocks came out, and I think the the Planet Zoo community collectively lost its its marbles <laughs> there, um, but yeah, no, they, they turned out really, really cool. I like the um, this kind of a seaside uh, vibe you have there. Have this nice little uh, viewing enclosure as well. Again, kind of go with that um, New England kind of. Hey, we found a Frank. Oh man, see, this is why it's a good thing I'm doing this. Uh, this tour there, get rid of all the Franks that I missed there. Uh, but anyway, kind of a New England uh, fishing port vibe there. 
Yeah, I really like the little views that you get that way. Speaking of views in uh, Australia Pack and all that kind of fun stuff, had a sneaky little view happen right over here. This was all by accident where uh, this butts up, this whole area butts right up against um, our kangaroo, our roo habitat here from the Australia section, which we're going to get to in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a sneaky little um, accident there. Happy little accident, right? <laughs> um, where you get a, a backside view of the kangaroo habitat. But we're not here for the kangaroos just yet. We're going to head on over this way and get some more views of the uh, the seals there, but yeah, there you go. And oh yeah, here's the first uh, use over here of the uh, what was it the animal keeper talk, right? The keeper talks, what do they call them? Yeah, keeper talks. So the uh, the animal talk there. That was the first one that I used, and it was really really cool to see the uh, keepers come over here or the animal talk people come over here and actually use it. And I thought it was a really cool little spot there, a little uh, dock site. It gets a little bit crowded, not gonna lie, a little crowded with the. Uh, Doc probably could have made it a little bit bigger to accompany all the uh, the guests that come over here, but ah, what are you going to do, right? So, cool, let's go ahead and head over this way to the Penguin Encounter and the Icy Cafe. Really like the little design that I did right here. I might steal that for my new uh, project that I'm already working on there, because it's very modern, very sleek kind of looking there. But there's your uh, view of the uh, exterior of the Icy Cafe. And, uh, but yeah, let's go uh, this way to Penguin Encounter, where we did a big uh, interior there. So we're actually going to boop off the lights. Usually a good idea to boop off the lights and interiors, unless there's like sunroofs or something like that, but let's head on in. Nice and dark, let the light adjust. There it goes. Boom! Here we go. So, here we go inside the penguin encounter, and uh, yeah, I actually, I remember this wall. It doesn't look like anything big right now, but this wall was like, oh, so amazing at the time because it uses the new font pieces, if I remember right, if I can get one here. Uh, there we go, yeah, it uses the new font pieces that we got uh, with the, I think they're free, with the uh, aquatic pack or whatever, but uh, yeah, so I used all the H's and you, uh, made this kind of uh, neat look, looking design wall there, but yeah, that was the big thing, I was like, oh, look what I did with the H! <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, coming over here, just uh, fly through the interior there. Actually, you know what, I will go ahead and turn on the uh, the sun there, we'll turn the sun back on. Clap, clap, there we go, clap on. Uh, whoa, gotta got love those J.J. Abrams uh, sun rays there. Uh, just because we have some nice uh, sunroof up there. But yeah, welcome to the bottom of the world here as we uh, tour through our penguin uh, encounter there. And remember, we got the murals back here as well, which we got with the aquatic pack. And hey, there's a little sleeping guy right there. Normally you don't see him over here. Uh, but it's funny because I was talking to someone and now these murals there, they still look really good and the uh, quality of them looks really great compared to billboards, but... We have billboards now in game, and I probably wouldn't have totally skipped over these if we had billboards at the moment, um, and just yeah, use billboards instead of that there. But uh, so yeah, this is kind of interesting to think about now in, uh, in retrospect, uh, kind of further on there. But yeah, as we head on in here, here's the big open air, and you can totally just imagine how loud it would be in here with all the penguins. I know it doesn't look like there's too many. Um, I think a lot of them are diving right now, or they're gone somewhere. But anyways, there's a button. There used to be like 20 penguins in here. I feel like I mean, imagine how loud and how much it would smell and everything like that. Whenever I go into a penguin. Penguin uh, habitat. It's always nice and stinky there. So, um, just some general king penguin uh, information there. Oh, also, uh, now that we have mods, I probably would have had a bunch of different species of penguins that can cohabitat there. Oh, there's a nice shot there of all the penguins um, underwater and the guests uh, going up there and everything. That's cool. Um, uh, also over here, yeah, that's right, I was trying to remember what this was here. Uh, this is a little uh, picture spot, so yeah, I imagine this would be if there was ever like a zoo mascot or maybe they'd have someone dressed up in a penguin uh, suit or something like that. They come over here and you get a little photo spot for the uh, kids and family right there. You know, a nice little backdrop with the penguins and everything. I think there's even a little, little bit. I gotta remember to save the zoo after this and doing a lot of little uh, tweaks and little touches there. I think there's even some land right there. You know what we can do? We can just paint it. Short. There we go. It's like it never existed. But yeah, you know, pull the camera out, get a nice picture there of the uh, kids with the zoo mascot and everything there. But so cool. Let's go ahead and head out. That does it with the interior here. Now I know there's a door here, and you're like, oh, well, what about the icy cafe? Well, here's the icy cafe. Yeah, I ran out of time. I kind of ran out of time before the aquatic pack came out, and I just kind of moved on um, from there. So I never got to do the uh, icy cafe interior. Whoa, those people are ghosts. They ran right through the icy cafe side. Um, but you know, you kind of get the uh, general gist of it there, right? So. Cool, let's get an overview of the entire Seal Cove and Penguin encounter there. So here you go, nice little section of the zoo. So there we go. And you know what, there's actually one more part. It feels, um, it's weird because it feels like it's not connected to Seal Cove or the uh, Penguin encounter area at all, but it's right over here. There's actually underwater viewing. Of course there has to be underwater viewing, right? There's seals and stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and head over that way. I like this little uh, bit of terrain that I did over this way. I kind of imagine that uh, there's a lot of like water runoff this way, so you get a lot of sticks and uh, fallen tree and debris that would kind of run off over this way. Just, I don't know, it's kind of... Uh, 
fun little landscape things. Love doing foliage and landscape over here, right? So, nice little uh, nature trail that the guests sometimes decide to. These people decided, no, not today. I just ate a chili corn dog. Not doing it today. We're going the easy way. But let's go over here to the, the cave here that's uh, not marked. Probably should put a sign up over there. See, dang it, I'm, I'm seeing all these things I want to add in. No, it's fine. It's done. <laughs> but let's head on down. <laughs> Let's head down to our seal, underwater uh, seal viewing there. So, boom, there you go. I love this view there. I think it's a great, great view um, of the uh, seals as they're going around there. So, did a minimal amount of uh, rock work. Wanted it to really look like it was, you know, still built in with the concrete and, you know, it's really built in. Um, it actually had a foundation and everything, but also a little bit of the, um, the seals are having a bit of a time there. <laughs> uh, still have some of that rock work going on there. So, uh, but yeah, there you go. There's the underwater viewing. Have to have it. Have to have it. But yeah, let's boop up over this way. And this is really, really new over here. So we just covered this um, in a recent video and just got done streaming all of this um yeah, very recently, uh, basically. So, uh, but here is the Clouded Leopard. So you know that that came from these recent sea pack there. Uh, we'll get an above view of this one here. But yeah, here's the um, outdoor section of the Clouded Leopard habitat. You Sometimes they're in there, oh man, they put their cardboard box into the gross moat water. Uh, but let's see, sometimes they are out here, but oftentimes they like their indoor uh, section because they, um, I don't know if they're naturally shy, but they definitely seem to be shy in game. So um, yeah, again, you'll often see them there or sometimes, oh, here comes one right now. Speaking of, sometimes you'll see them up in the bedding. Nope, they are not up in the bedding. So, uh, but there is one coming out right now. So that's pretty exciting to see. Uh, let's head, uh, speaking of that interior, let's head over to the interior. Which will be, oh, this is just a little peek into the uh, veterinary uh, area. But let's head into the, yeah, the, clepper, uh, the clouded leopard uh, viewing there. So come on in here and boom, we have a little little bit of interior. Did a lot of this on stream. A lot of this uh, zoo, the second half of it was kind of done on stream. Kind of doing that more so uh, with my builds there. But yeah, this was really, really fun to do. Got to use a lot of the billboards. You can see where we got some of the uh, custom information signs coming in here. Uh, so yeah, some of the, uh, you can definitely tell what a later build is in Thornton Hill Zoo because I use billboards and all the tools that are at our disposal there. So uh, over here, another use of the billboards. Try to build little bitty little uh, like terrariums and stuff like that. So I kind of turned out... Uh, a little bit well, uh, especially with the one meter uh, billboards, but yeah, it kind of sells it, right? So, uh, but we're here for is definitely there's another one. Like I said, there's always one in here. Seems to always be at least one of the uh, clouded leopards in here because they seem to be uh, pretty shy wow. there. But again, yeah, shout out to billboards because uh, that backdrop looks so good. And you always see that in zoos, right? Where they uh, put up like the jungle or the uh, forest kind of backdrop to kind of uh, mask the, uh, yeah, the interior and stuff like that. So, uh, and also you get a little view here of the um, nice loud drawer there. <laughs> a view of the uh, kind of the backstage area where the uh, the keepers go and stuff like that. So cool. Let's go ahead and head on out. So we have a lot more to go through here. Man, there's so much more to go through. I'm just thinking like we gotta go this, 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 this. <laughs> uh, let's head back this way. Backtrack just a little bit because did miss um, a bit of a new uh, some new stuff over this way. So if we go down here have our oh you know what i never uh completed this out so i'm actually going to complete this out before i send it out but this is a just classic aviary set um this is a modular set on the workshop so really easy to build that but yeah this i uh, gotta put some uh probably birds of prey uh, in here that's why i already have the signs kind of going out there but also have this little education center uh, over here so you can imagine just, yeah bringing the kids um, over here and you know the the adults can kind of hang out on these old railroad tie uh, kind of retaining wall and everything there and the kids can kind of come down here you imagine there'd be like a, a zookeeper or just like a guest relations person or someone just kind of hanging out there so yeah i like this little uh nook over here this little uh downward area now this used to have uh, and some people might be wondering um, what happened to it uh, from stream i did uh, used to have a big old enclosure over here for like Binturong and uh, the tapir and just a whole bunch of other things there but unfortunately i lost that uh, due to an unfortunate crash and i didn't get anything saved but that's kind of the fun thing. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, that's kind of the fun thing about crashes, uh, as you kind of sometimes come back and be like, you know, that idea was kind of fun, but maybe I can kind of come up with something a little bit different there. And I do like how this turned out. I think it's a be lot better uh, use of the uh, land there, and was able to, um, yeah, use the uh, land that wasn't built with the big enclosure for something else there. So, uh, cool. Let's go ahead and head um, over this way. Let's see where were we? Yes, let's go right this way. So as we come over this way, a few more new enclosures. Oh no, pinata! Sounds like he said. Uh, so yeah, these are some quick one-off uh, little enclosures, and what I mean by that is just like they almost look like aviary. I mean they are aviaries because there's birds in them. Um, but yeah, they're just really quick. You know, they're just little 
square box aviaries and you know i know a lot of people um are like oh you could do like so much more with these uh, animals in there but uh, again thornton hill zoo is kind of a realistic uh, ish zoo or tries to be a little bit and you definitely see these kind of um habitats kind of sprinkled throughout uh zoos and everything i'm definitely looking forward to modders and hopefully frontier officially uh giving us some more uh, like you know small um birds and some so, uh, small animals and stuff like that to kind of put in between the big a and b uh type animals there so uh but anyways yeah so shout out to a lot of modders there and uh, a lot of the official uh you know uh, frontier animals but yeah we have some more uh peafowl in here i think it's like helmeted uh peafowl and guinea fowl and all that kind of fun stuff there uh we have the indian peafowl as well over this way we have the chickens we had some fun on stream with this we nicknamed all the chickens uh into star wars names i, don't, I can't remember why but we just decided to so we have kylo hen uh let's see we have luke sky chicken um princess lay eggs and uh chewbacca so there you go we had some fun again on stream kind of naming all the chickens into star wars names and then here is the uh, other uh fowl over here which one is this this isn't the helmeted one right uh, this is you no know, the vulturine that's right the helmeted is over there and then this is the vulturine so that's what i mean you know we get um four quick uh, enclosures right here again they're not you know the best or anything to write home about but they are very realistic in the sense so that you see uh zoos do these kind of enclosures um all the time and this is what i mean where um i don't know that these would always stick around uh, i think that the, maybe the zoo would eventually do away with these type of enclosures uh, but again we're officially into the classic area of the zoo the part of the zoo that uh, will probably need a revamp a remodel uh, very very soon and probably be getting it next there um so yeah you might be seeing these kind of go away in the next uh, few years and everything so uh, but speaking of the classic area of the zoo this is definitely the um most inspired by the brookfield zoo overall so in the middle here we have the big uh Buckingham Pal uh, Buckingham Palace, Buckingham Fountain inspired, uh, yeah, fountain right there. So big old classic uh, fountain, big centerpiece for the zoo there. Um, and another thing around here you're gonna notice a lot of fo uh, foliage, right? Big big uh, emphasis. We're kind of just back out because we're not gonna go on every single path, but big full uh, emphasis on this being in the middle of a woods and everything there. So this is where a lot of the inspiration came from Brookfield Zoo in uh, Brookfield, Illinois, which is basically Chicago. Um, but essentially, yeah, the Brookfield Zoo has a lot of this where there. There's just big uh, areas, either big open areas with no trees or big kind of forested areas. And a lot of itty bitty, um, what are they called, desire paths? I think they're called desire paths. Uh, where you can see right here where guests just kind of make their own paths. Uh, through there you'll see guests just kind of lounging and like uh, eating a lunch or yeah, just kind of lounging around and just kind of hanging out in like a parks uh, type setting. So I really wanted the uh, center part of the zoo to have that feel there where again you just have all these desire paths and you know a few enclosures here and there but um, really mainly just kind of focused on the guests being able to just kind of go in a park and just kind of hang out uh, kind of thing. So and that's uh, really emphasized here. Uh, someone had a great idea to put in a movies uh, at the zoo, like a movie night at the zoo type thing. So yeah, I went ahead and built up a uh, little lawn structure here. I looked it up and a lot of zoos do this, especially, you know, during the uh, hot summer or the nice summer months there. And yeah, you can kind of bring your own uh, lawn chairs or the zoo will provide some for you. And yeah, let's do a little uh, like inflatable uh, like zoo or a zoo, uh, an inflatable um, theater and everything like that but yeah i think it's a really cool idea and it kind of fits in with our uh big kind of center forest idea there so there you go there let's go ahead and head over to this building which again is relatively new and oh yeah if you're lost here's another zoo map so anyone lost here you go try and pinpoint where we're at need help we're right around here's the fountain we're going right here to the bird that's right so it's birdhouse time so we just did a big tour of this. We're going to kind of fly through this one a little... Ha ha ha, I didn't even mean to do that. But <laughs> we're going to fly through this one, the birdhouse, a little bit quicker. Because we just did a tour very, very recently of this. But yeah, here is the... Um, the big birdhouse here. So here's for the birds uh, gifts there. Lots of uh, cool blueprint uh, items there from the workshop. If you type in gift shop, you'll get a bunch of good stuff from like Just Goron and a whole bunch of other people there. Creative games. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of good uh, content creators making good stuff there. So uh, head over this way. And yeah, this was a really, really fun build to do, all inspired by the billboards when they came out. Because uh, yeah, I was just kind of thinking like, hey, we can do those backdrops uh, for different aviaries, kind of like this there, there you go. Um, that really makes an aviary, I think, or you know, like a bird enclosure where you can really add in the uh, backdrops and stuff like that. So yeah, just again, uh, billboards have really added in a ton of uh, creative uh, leeway for our zoos, I think, there. So go, 
Off and on through. Again, big shout out here to... Oh no! I don't have the mod installed! <laughs> That's so funny. So this is what's going to happen if you don't have certain mods installed. Uh, but right here, there should be from uh, Nicholas Lion Rider, the Kookaburra. Uh, but I forgot, I just cleaned out my mods because um, I thought there was an issue with one of them. So, uh, But anyways, this should be a Kookaburra right there uh, that Nicholas Lion Rider made. And uh, yeah, I do know in the past video where we did this, you can actually see it in action. But yeah, so I have had people... That's actually a good example. I've had uh, people ask me, hey, what if I don't have mods installed? Uh, will, I, will I be able to go into Thornton Hill Zoo? The answer is yes, because that, those are the kind of mods I use. I use either replacement mods, um, yeah, that's, I use replacement mods or standalone animal mods. I don't use any of the new scenery mods that crash your game or anything like that. That's in the new project. I'm going full on mods, so that's uh, really funny. So, uh, But anyways, yeah, coming in here, here's the big kind of main room here with the most birds, and then we have our butthead goose out there too. Everyone seems to really like the butthead goose idea there, where we have the one goose that's uh, the Canadian goose that's actually on the outside of the uh, enclosure they're kind of looking in on all the other animals Meh. you know you can just imagine again if you're familiar with Canadian geese you know you you know that they're a little bit uh hmm <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit questionable in their uh, their morals, it seems like so. Uh, but anyways, let's move on through here to the last room here. And yeah, we have our last two enclosures. So I think of the burrowing owl. And uh, I everyone keeps mentioning what uh, animals should go in here. And I always forget the name of it. But uh, yeah, some sort of, I think, either a finch or some African um, nesting bird or something like that. But it was really like this room here. And uh, always got to shout out that, uh, you know, big shout out to the... Planet Zoo lighting engine because it looks so good, especially for interiors and stuff. Get all the different uh, lighting angles and stuff. It looks so so good. So uh, awesome. Let's go ahead and move through, which is gonna boop us back to the four of the birds uh, gifts there. So uh, cool. Actually, you know, let's get one last look at this enclosure because I feel like I just flew by it like literally like. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and head on out. We'll unpause the game now. Pause it just for a second because there's nothing moving around in there, obviously, right? But we will get an exterior view of the entire birdhouse there and I did add in that is the new thing I added in a little section over here of the backstage uh, so I found some really cool backstage items on the workshop there and uh, built some of those myself as well obviously uh, then, uh, yeah I had this awesome uh, rock wall as well kind of hanging out in my um, blueprints and stuff so I uh, went ahead and put that in over here to really mask the backstage right you'll never know there's a backstage here because rock wall <laughs> or climbing structure wall so yeah that's the perfect and all these uh, tree planters too you see this in theme parks and stuff like in uh, zoos all the time uh where they're just like no 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 there's no backstage right there these are planters that's a tree right <laughs> so it's just a little uh, quick little uh, uh hiding bit there so here's another one of our desire paths so again i think that's a really cool idea because you see those all the times and uh, even even like parking lots for like walmart and all that you see desire paths everywhere so really wanted to uh, put those in obviously in-game guests can't use them i didn't want to keep putting in more and more little paths for the guests to have to figure out to use and everything so i uh, just kind of painted it in with the brush there uh over here so i'm kind of harping back to what we we're talking about with the uh the small bird cages and small aviaries and everything this is another um quick Four animals, I think three, three or four animals any, um, here, but this is like canine row here. So uh, yeah, these are all different canines. I think only one of them is from in-game, the doll, but we have the red fox, the coyote, yes, the coyote, and the doll. So two modded animals and one uh, doll there. So if you don't get, have the modded animals um, installed, which again, standalone animals, they're really easy to install and they're totally legit and really, uh, yeah, again, they're really easy to install and you get really cool uh, modded in animals there. But yeah, I just kind of thought it'd be uh, nice to put in, or not nice necessarily, because these enclosures are not great, but again, it harps back to that classic zoo feel, right? Where you can kind of go through and sometimes see like a bunch of um, back to back to back to back uh, dogs or uh, whatever animal kind of thing. So yeah, there you go uh, with the uh, different enclosures for our canines. Here's a closer look at the red fox and everything. There they are. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Here's the coyote. There you go. You look really, actually, they just had an update, so these look a lot better than they originally did. Nice. And then the dole. We all know what the dole looks like, right? But I always love how they look. Oh, look at him. He's actually up on the uh, rock a little bit awkwardly. Huh. I think it's like the ultimate, you know how dogs sniff each other's butts? I think he's like the ultimate, like, hey, want to sniff my butt? I'd love it if you sniff my butt. Anyways, <laughs> let's move back this way just to give you a little perspective of where we're at. Uh, this is the clouded leopard habitat. And the bird was over, right over there, so we were kind of walking along this way. That path led over this way. And now we're going to go over to Australia. Remember earlier, we were kind of seeing a little bit of a boop, a little bit of a... Uh, teaser of Australia with the kangaroo habitat. Now we're going to go through the official Australia uh, 
area. I almost said habitat, but that's not in an area there. So yeah, this uh, was all built again uh, during the uh, pre-release of the Australia pack and everything. I got uh, early access to it, so this is a really, really fun uh, build to do during um, that kind of pre-release week and everything. So coming through here, got to use a lot of the rustic items, a lot of the items that we uh, use today as just kind of commonplace, right? You almost don't think of them as part of the Australia pack. It's just like, oh yeah, I have my uh, rusted out items or my rusted beams or whatever that are uh, super useful. <laughs> so uh, as you come through here, gotta go by Mecharoo! Totally awesome Mecharoo. Um, but yeah, the first uh, enclosure has to be kangaroos, right? So there you go, kind of tie in where the um, aquatic pack, or the, uh, the seal cove is. Uh, see, right up there, that's right where we were earlier. So it's, uh, again, it was totally a happy accident that those uh, two uh, enclosures kind of met up right there, the two pathways met up there. So there is that, and as we come over this way, like these little shade structures there from the uh, Australia pack as well. Up, oh, gotta get our, get our dingo out, there we go. Yeah, as we go over this way, we have a big path that goes around our big dingo habitat. The dingo's got the biggest habitat out of everyone. I just felt like they needed the uh, room to kind of run around there. So yeah, I have a big old path kind of going around. This is the definitely emptiest part of the zoo. I have about 3,500 guests in here, but people just don't seem to be that attracted to the... Uh, to the, uh, the roos and the other Australia uh, animals too much. Maybe I need to make their enclosures better or something, but... Uh, either way, either way, maybe if we had 10,000 guests, that would do it, right? Uh, so over this way, um, I thought it would be a cool idea to kind of put in some of the art installations that we got from the Australia pack because they look really, really cool there. So put that little uh, art installation right across from our uh, koalas here. Yeah, so this is our koala habitat. Uh, so there you go. Oh, I tried to put a lot of uh, different climbing trees in there so they would um, always uh, kind of be up in the trees. A lot of times you'll see them up there, but right now you have them both on the ground. Maybe they just got fed or something like that. But uh, yeah, there's our koala habitat. This is one that I really wish I would have gone back and redone because uh, I would have done this on an interior kind of thing. A lot of people left really great comments when they uh, saw this uh, habitat, gave some great suggestions. And yeah, I think I would have made this like a uh, an interior or a house or something like that. Put a few other uh, Australia, maybe bugs or reptiles or something like that to go along with it. But uh, either way, you know, it turned out okay there. <laughs> As we come over this way, this is kind of a like a town center almost. Wanted to get some uh, big foliage uh, kind of as you're coming out of the woods there. And you got kind of come into town there. So I really like these kind of bright blue and bright orange buildings there to... Um, I don't know, as I was looking into a lot of Australian uh, architecture, or just kind of, I think I typed in, yeah, traditional Australia architecture, something like that. I noticed a lot of really kind of bright, uh, vibrant, vibrant rather, uh, vibrant colors uh, with their architecture and stuff like that. So not sure how true that is to, you know, um, a lot of places, but I thought that was really cool to kind of get in those bright oranges and kind of have a little bit of that uh, Oceanside uh, vibe there with some of the uh, builds and everything. So yeah, nice little restaurant, a nice, uh, uh, just some memento gifts and everything. And then over off to the side, I uh, went ahead and snuck in our cassowaries. So originally this was one uh, cassowary uh, enclosure there, and then I was quickly told that uh, probably not a good idea to put cassowaries together, unless it is a very uh, special occasion or something like that, or maybe their uh, family or something like that. Um, but yeah, anyways, yeah, cassowaries are very much known for uh, being like the beta fish of birds, where they will rip each other apart uh, if they are put together. So they, uh, I definitely just put a nice little fence right between them there, and now we have our two cassowary uh, enclosures over there. So hey, um, one enclosure, or two enclosure for the price of one kind of thing is the way I see it. So cool, let's head over this way, get away from the, the guttural noise is so creepy to me. It's, it's so weird sounding. Um, let's go to a part of the zoo that is not accessible to guests. This is, um, you're going to see this a few times. I have a few abandoned enclosures, um, especially in the classic area of the zoo. So here is a, a bit of a blind spot, or blind, a bit of a dark eye rather. Um, yeah, a bit of a dark eye for the uh, zoo here. So this is the zoo's old bear pit. Um, so yeah, Thornton Hill Zoo is old enough where it probably would have had originally a old bear pit for guests to uh, view the grizzly bears or whatever. It might have been polar bears, who knows. Um, and yeah, and you know, it's, it's one of those things where the zoo hasn't taken it out. And I do kind of see that um, once the zoo comes through and renovates it, I don't think that they would take it out completely. I think that they would use it as a learning experience. I don't know if zoos really do this uh, with their old bear pits nowadays or if they just kind of completely get rid of them and gut them. Um, but I would think um, if I was the, in charge of the zoo, I would use it again as an educational experience to say, this is what zoos, yes, this is what we used to do. Uh, but we have learned, you know, through the decades, through the, uh, you know, whatever, through the zoo's time and everything to not do this and this is why we shouldn't do this you know learn from our uh, history kind of thing learn from our past mistakes kind of thing instead of just kind of completely shutting it out and just acting like 
you know, this never happened, whatever. Um, but so yeah, that, I kind of tied that in a little bit as we come into our classic zoo. And actually, uh, fans of Thornton Hill Zoo that have been following this uh, series for a long time, um, if you would, if you believe it or not, this is actually where the old entrance used to be. The very first entrance for Thornton Hill Zoo was actually right here, uh, but we paved it over for a parking lot, right? <laughs> paved Paradise made it a parking lot. Uh, so yeah, we took that out and gutted a lot of it and put the Australia section over here. And that kind of ties in with the story, uh, realistically as well, that they kind of moved the classic uh, zoo entrance because it wasn't working anymore, and they had this idea for the Australia section and uh, moved it way. That's where the that's where we started, <laughs> and that's the uh, penguin encounter and everything. Just get your bearings. So, uh, but yeah, moved the entrance to a little bit of the uh, center point for the zoo so but anyways uh, all that being said as we kind of boot back over this way um, you can kind of uh, still get more signs of the classic zoo there uh, with these towers and everything so yeah left the towers from the original entrance uh, yeah just to signify you know this is the classic uh, area of the zoo so and then talking about the bears and everything did lead this statue up over here uh, just again to kind of uh, pay homage or just kind of remember you know yes yeah, so there was a you know old bear pit over there which you can kind of see a little bit right there actually from the uh, guest path um, um, you can just kind of pay an homage to the bears that uh, were over there and had to endure that or something I, something like that just kind of paying uh, respect or whatever so another map are y'all lost how we doing we doing good <laughs> let's see so we went from the last time we saw a map which was right there and actually almost directly across from it right over uh this way next to the gifts and uh, restaurant and everything there so yeah we're doing good going through the classic area we're gonna make our way up to the north american go through the let's see so, i don't know somewhere over here it's gonna get messy so <laughs> a lot of those areas of the zoo kind of run into each other uh there so cool let's go ahead and go down uh livestock or hoofstock row excuse me, not livestock uh hoofstock row there as we go down this way so yeah these were some of the most original uh enclosures for the zoo as far as building and game goes and uh probably as far as the zoo goes overall we also have our um, creepy crawly things house. What do I call it? Creepy things. Yeah, creepy things house. <laughs> that has our spiders and stuff like that. There's no interior. It's based off the Brookfield Zoo Australia house, I believe. But uh, but anyways, um, yeah, we have our uh, hoofstock row here with the uh, the alpacas. Or no, is it alpaca or llama? I can't remember which one's the mod and which one's not. The llamas. Okay, the alpaca are the mod. And uh, yeah, so we have the llamas. We have the camels, which are normally in here. I don't see any camels. Right? Oh, the camels move. That's right. I forgot. That's part of the story. We used to have camels in here, but they have recently moved moved into the Expedition Asia uh, into a much better enclosure. So we'll see the camels later on. So there's, um, this whole section of the zoo is very barren right now. And that's, that's kind of on purpose again, because this whole section is going to be redone very, very soon. But anyways, you still have the llamas over here. Here we go. Moving over this way, we have another restaurant. Very classic old restaurant. Speaking of classic and old, kind of pass by it over here. We have a uh, staff room that used to be probably an old house or a, um, I don't know, something to do with the maybe guest relations or something. But yeah, just really old architecture with it. You know, some redone roofs and stuff, but uh, now it's a old staff building there. And same thing with this uh, structure over here. This definitely was not always a restaurant in a gift shop there, uh, but was kind of converted into one uh, over the time and everything. So there you go. Uh, up next, let's see, did I pass any enclosures? I did pass a few enclosures. What is in here? Oh, just the llamas. Yeah, it's a big old llama enclosure now. Uh, up next here, oh yeah, that's right. There's there's uh, tape here, I believe. Yes, right? Yes. I always confuse the tape here. No copy sometimes. But yeah, we have the uh, tape here right over here in this next uh, enclosure there. So those are the only two out of like five enclosures. Those are the only two that uh, animals that actually take up. Uh, space there because this is the last uh, enclosure of Hoofstock Row and as you can see it's a little bit uh, worn out there because there's nothing in there and it hasn't been anything in there for quite some time so yeah again all this whole area of the zoo very much so uh, ready to be redone up there a lot of the animals have been taken out and put into uh, better parts of the zoo so uh, let's head on into small animals uh, this is a, another area of the zoo that's not really visited that much because uh, there's not too much going on in here um, nowadays but yeah let's head on into small animals we'll turn the lights off to readjust but the first animal we have here is the aardvark so yeah, this is a fun little nocturnal uh, house to make there so here we have their aardvarks let's see where are they there they are there's one right there have another one yeah there's usually one sleeping here i like this little view here of the uh little sleeping area there so there you have the uh, aardvark view across from here in our big plaza that no one ever walks into and it's a dang shame because they're missing out on a great lemur uh, habitat there. I'm actually going to turn the lights back on because it looks a lot better. Um, but yeah, this was up, done up by Carlos G. Everything you see uh, in front of you here with the um, exhibit was all, yeah, Carlos G. I think this is the first time that uh, Carlos worked in the zoo for me there. So uh, yeah, the, uh, he messaged me and said, hey, I have a great idea 
uh, for the lemur enclosure and I was like yeah shoot man go for it and yeah came back with this it looks so good right love the uh, roof structure there and uh, all the light coming in and everything it looks really 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 good so um, but yeah and then here is the kind of outdoor area uh, kind of done up and everything so hey, look at there's actually people and they're actually looking out for whatever reason there's paths underneath there and everything you know this whole thing is all done up uh, right there's paths yeah there's paths everywhere um, this whole thing is all done up I built it up Carlos did the enclosure but no guests will ever 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 uh, walk Walk up close to it and uh, we'll, we won't ever view it so that's why I was so surprised that guests are actually there so if you download the zoo and uh, get it and your guests actually walk over here let me know because that'll be like a miracle <laughs> um, but cool let's head into the second half of the uh, small uh, small animal house moving over this way we have just a bunch of uh, in-game exhibit animals there go have the desert one over here this was kind of a cool little experiment i did trying to make the two enclosures look one kind of didn't i didn't fully get it he kind of tell that the glass is still there uh but yeah the desert one especially with the uh desert rock and everything kind of sell it to look like one big enclosure uh through there actually i think we can see the snake oh yeah look at you can actually see the snake there well granted the snakes are easier to see than the uh the bugs and stuff right but it's always fun to actually see the exhibit animals here let's see if we can see them anymore as we're kind of passing by let's see what's in here there's another snake it might be easy to see Let's see it. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> right over there, you see him? Boop, boop, boop. Pulled a Harry Potter, fell through the glass. Uh, anyways, yeah, and over here, Carlos also uh, did up the uh, Gariel there. So really like the interior here of the Gariel. It's a nice little pool and everything. So yeah, it's, you know, I've, I have a lot of people always comment like, oh man, it's so small though. You know, you can make that bigger. And yes, let's, you know, hypothetically in the game yes we can make all these enclosures as big as you know the size of you know their natural habitat but we're we put constraints on the build right it's a realistic quote-unquote realistic uh, ish zoo build and everything there so we got to put constraints on stuff sometimes the budget isn't there for um, all the animals to have the best enclosure uh, ever type uh, thing so uh, let's go ahead and do a, a quick little zoom out get your bear oh yeah before we do that uh, we were talking about old buildings Here's another one of those old buildings that's not really in use. Eh, actually, it might be this old industrial building, but I uh, picture this being a, maybe an old power station. I don't know if they would burn coal or anything in here, uh, but they burned something here with the big smokestack and industrial building, right? So this building's uh, gone through a bunch of different zoos because it's up on the workshop, but I know uh, specifically it's gone through a few of uh, SDM Wolf's uh, builds there and stuff like that. So always fun to see this, um, yeah, this building go through a... a bunch of different zoos, a bunch of different environments there, but yeah, it's kind of attached to our small animals building, and uh, yeah, it'd probably be uh, still in use today, but not as much as it was in the past there, but yeah, let's go ahead and do a whole back out here, so you can see what the heck is going on, where are we at and everything, so there you go, that's the whole big section that we have seen so far, with the fountain and everything, there we go, so there's the fountain, there's the penguins at Australia over that way, Hoofstock Row this way, small animal enclosure. The one thing we didn't talk about, and actually it's part of the classic area. Actually, no one's really seen this except for uh, the people that join me on stream. So here's another uh, old abandoned enclosure here. So I am thinking that this would be the old polar bear enclosure. Uh, and I almost hate to say that because it's such a, it's really bad, but <laughs> uh, I just kind of felt like there needed to be another old abandoned enclosure over here. So we were right over by the uh, small animal house there. We were about to start walking this way, but yeah, I don't know that it would be in use that much. They might use it for some storage and stuff over here because uh, there's a uh, staff door right here. But yeah, if we go back here, here's the old, uh, obviously the backstage that's been not used in a long time there. But as we go up above, here's the guest viewing area. And yeah, you kind of see there's a bunch of random crap thrown in there some old storage for the carts and um, stuff like that but yeah it's really been a while since they used this and just that old oh yeah it's basically a bear pit but almost the the version two i don't even know what version this would be like i almost picture like the 60s and 70s uh kind of had these they were bear pits but they were kind of done up and bigger and made out of concrete and so i don't know uh, a little bit better bear pit or something like that so but anyways yeah this is the old bear pit and uh, if y'all have been following for a while you know that we're gonna see the new bear pit there or no not bear pit their new bear enclosure that's much much nicer uh, than, than uh, any of this there so uh, but yeah overall let's do one last um boop out because you kind of see you can kind of envision uh, yourself or even if you you take over Thornton Hills Zoo you could do it yourself uh, this whole section right through here right where my mouse is going over this is all up for redo 
Uh, a lot of it's random with the Clouded Leopard. Australia right here, kind of random. You could probably expand Australia out a whole bunch more. Uh, some of the enclosures here, as far as the Husak Row, you know, the straight up abandoned ones. Uh, the houses are a little bit older, uh, ready to be updated. <clears throat> So, yeah, if you take over Thornton Hill Zoo, you are definitely in a good spot to update this section next if you were wanting to, or just kind of marvel at it. But, yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool if someone had the idea, or had an idea of how to update this whole section and kind of tie it in more thematically, uh, how the zoo is kind of going, which is more, uh, yeah, more themes, more, yeah, tied in... Uh, areas and uh, stuff like that so but either way let's go ahead and head into uh, one of those kind of newer areas a little bit newer kind of newer older uh, that's gonna be North America and we're gonna go in through the quote-unquote entrance there's a few entrances to uh, North America uh, but we're gonna go ahead and head over this way it's actually really hard to see the entrance way uh, now that we put the trees up actually let's go down to guest view and you can really get a, a feel there for how dense uh, it looks down here, but I think it looks really cool. It really gets, uh, gives you a sense of like, wow, we're in the middle of the woods. You know, that happens to be a zoo kind of thing. Oh, we need to move the uh, concrete. <laughs> uh, cool, let's head over uh, this way into North America. Very subtle entrance, but yeah, made uh, this entrance way way back when the game almost first came out there, essentially. So, cool, let's head on in. And the first enclosures and stuff you see. Actually, there's not too many. It's, it's a lot of uh, little art installations. And then I always like to make little plazas or you know, little entrance areas uh, to kind of get your bearings. If you want to go use a restroom, you know, get some uh, snacks or anything. This is kind of your uh, little entrance area. Also get a really cool view of the uh, big lake. That's kind of the anchor point of the, uh, the North American section there. Actually, if I remember right, we get a really cool sunset view. Yes, we do. Right about kaboom! There it is, right there. <laughs> uh, so there's just some really good uh, sunset views around here in Sunrise. Uh, but anyways, there's a really nice little uh, hangout area. I have a little enclosure right here, a little small animal house. It's also doubles as a entrance to the uh, staff backstage. Not really an interior here, very, very minimal. Actually, almost nothing. So, uh, But yeah, then that leads for the staff to go into their big uh, backstage building back there. Didn't Wasn't really doing interiors at this point in uh, Thornton Hill Zoo. Uh, it was really only to the last second half of the zoo that I was um, making sure everything had an interior for the most part. So, But let's head on down the uh, path here. And you've probably been hearing them bark a little bit and howl, but our first big animal enclosure there. Uh, first off, this is the uh, little boathouse there for our boat that goes around. We'll get an um, above view of the boathouse and everything, um, or the boat route, rather, uh, just a minute there. But yeah, the big first enclosure is going to be our timber wolves, and I love this enclosure. Now, this enclosure is uh, kind of interesting, because uh, again, it kind of makes sense in the form of like how the zoo expands, but uh, this enclosure it used to go way further back from what you can see there from its fence and everything. Uh, let's actually get a above view of it. But the, uh, essentially how it goes is uh, I, I started building uh, South America. That's what you can see right back there. That's South America right up against North America. It kind of made sense. Um, and it and encroached on the Timberwolf habitat. So the, yeah, the Timberwolf habitat used to go way back into almost where the waterfall is. Uh, and we, um, yeah, the zoo decided, or I decided, uh, that we needed to give some space for South America. So we encroached on the Timberwolf habitat just a little bit. And I feel like they would actually do that. You know, if the if a habitat um, was originally some size uh, and they needed some room, they might take a little bit away. But, you know, never fear our Timberwolves are still in great condition there. Uh, they still have, uh, what is, let's, let's take a look. Let, let me not, let me not lie to you. Maybe they're just like, I have no room. Uh, no, they still have like way over it. Some, something like double or triple the size uh, there. So <laughs> they're still doing quite all right with their size requirements according to the game and everything. So, uh, but anyways, yeah, I love how this Timberwolf habitat turned out. There's also a um, kind of underground viewing or a cave viewing here of their, um, yeah, there you go, of their cave and everything. So you can come in here and see the wolves uh, sleep and everything. Again, this is where I was, uh, I started to kind of do some interiors here and I guess I kind of finished it up. You know, we have wolf friend or foe and I was gonna do some information stuff, but really we just wasn't doing too much inter uh, interior work there. Uh, and I thought we just may as well preserve, you know, how I was actually building at that time. You can kind of see where how the zoo evolves and how my building uh, kind of evolves. So uh, speaking of evolving, uh, as we come over this way, we're kind of uh, uh, moving into a new kind of area, which is kind of the prairie of the North America. So you kind of see the a lot of flowers, brightness there and everything. Kind of move over this way. Get another view of the, um, the wolves there. But yeah, we kind of move into the prairie section of North America. Um, and yeah, if we take a right, that's going to move us over into South America. Where we're kind of pointing out um, a little bit ago. Here's Otter Talks and stuff like that. But we're going to stay in North America uh, full on there. And actually, there's another new little uh, section. Very, very new. We're going to get over there in just a minute. It's going to be fun to look at Expedition Asia uh, from White Andrews in just a little bit. So cool. Let's head over this way to the official The Great Plains. So um, as we go over this way, moving to over the bridge goes over our big 
boat any boats coming through here? Yep, there's a boat. Nice. Good timing. Doot doot. <laughs> it's always cool to actually see the uh, the boats coming through and everything. So cool. We'll go down this way. Here's the second boat dock. Another little uh, plaza or just kind of recoup area has a little. Uh, I just view it as like a rest stop along the highway, right? Where you can kind of go in. There's probably some vending machines, a uh, a restroom, maybe just some air conditioning real quick to uh, kind of settle down if you're walking all over. So there you go. But we'll keep moving over this way to the big main uh, attraction. Probably not the I don't know. This this probably would be one of the biggest uh, poles for the North America section, uh, but also the grizzly bear habitat. But anyways, this is a big old plains uh, section uh, habitat there. Now where are all the animals? There's no <laughs> there's normally like a huge uh, swaths. Of, they might be back in their stalls. But uh, anyways, yeah, this is home to bison and pronghorn there, and this is their big. Uh, yeah, big plane to kind of uh, roam about and stuff like that. So yeah, I really like how this turned out. It's kind of funny, uh, now uh, after doing the big uh, African savanna section, which we'll be looking at soon, I probably would put a lot more dead trees out uh, there. Right here. That kind of makes the whole section is uh, putting little branches and dead trees and stuff like that. But uh, oh yeah, here's a lot of the animals back here. But kind of the cool thing about this build was I uh, really started messing with the traversable area of animals. And as you can see here, they go actually using it right there. Um, took a lot of inspiration from uh, livestock yards because uh, I noticed a lot of zoos will do that kind of uh, look like livestock yards but yeah all the animals can kind of traverse their way through here and go back to these little um, huts and stuff or these little holding areas and here you see here's all of our pronghorn they're just getting out of the sun and taking some naps looks like they're all waking up from the naps and uh, time to get going uh, onto uh, out onto the fields and everything where they can get fed so yeah it's, I thought it was really cool it took a lot of time to kind of get the traversable area didn't really know much about it at the time but yeah it kind of got that to work where they'll actually go uh, back and forth between on stage and backstage there so yeah there's the big Big, uh, bison fields or bison pronghorn fields there get a bunch of really cool uh, views of it there here's a big boardwalk that you can get there another little uh, viewing building right there uh, but yeah let's move over this way to our last little sections of North America so this is where uh, Wyatt Andrews went ahead and helped again. Um, I went ahead and built a polar bear enclosure uh, when the game first came, or when the polar bears first came out. And went, oh man, was that a fun one! I, first, I was like one of the first people to release a polar bear enclosure, and everyone had a very strong opinion about the polar bear. Uh, what was it? The size requirements. Remember? So yeah, that was a very fun video to hear everyone's comments on. But anyways, um, Wyatt went ahead and came in and took that enclosure that I built in. Kind of redid um, a lot of it there to look a lot, lot better. Look, definitely love the modern look to it. It looks a lot more uh, sleek and kind of up to date with that uh, modern zoo type feel there. So we'll actually head down into the building. Oh, that's right. I built the shell of the building. I forgot. I was trying to remember there's something about this. Yeah, I built the shell of the building and then he came through and did a lot of the interior work and he did these little uh, like planetary kind of vibes there too. And I think I built this structure over here, which is like a restaurant as well. But if we're, anyways, regardless, let's uh, move on to the interior here. A little bit of an autosave going. It looks like there we go. Um, and yeah, you can kind of get a really cool view here of the new polar bear uh, enclosure. Love um, what he did with all this looks really really good to get an upper uh, deck view as well the only thing is that the polar bear oftentimes will not be out and I think that is a kind of indicative of how they actually are too oftentimes the polar bear is either hiding in there or hiding in the backstage area to get out of the uh, Sun I believe it is but either way you know the enclosure still looks really really good there love how that turned out so let's actually see where is our polar bear there it is see told you it's always always hanging out what is our polar bears? Oh, Nunique. That's right, Nunique. Unique Nunique. <laughs> so there's Nunique. Probably just woke up from a nap or something like that. But yeah, so big shout out to Wyatt Andrews for uh, this amazing looking uh, enclosure there. So cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's head down the pathway here. Get some more views of the polar bear enclosure as we're going by here. Hey, there's some actual guests. I was about to say, there's only... Uh, there's only uh, staff members in this zoo. They get really good views of the uh, animals. Hey, don't do that. Don't you do that to our new Uh This is a really cool sign here. I love this uh, kind of guest interaction you get. How do you measure up compared to a polar bear? It's like, no, I'm small. Uh, but yeah, I love that kind of uh, guest interaction there as you uh, go through. Uh, coming on down here, we have the doll sheep. There you go. Uh, let's see, I built this one. Yes, I built this one there. And uh, Wyatt, when he was coming through, did not mess with it at all. He said, that was fine. Didn't need to mess with it um, at all there. Dang it. Boxed up. <laughs> there you go. They even have some uh, kind of 
sneaky little areas where they can, um, if I remember, yeah, some sneaky little uh, caves and stuff like that where they can kind of come down in here and get out of uh, guest view and stuff like that. So that a lot of, uh, try to do that a lot with our uh, animals. Give them enough areas where they can kind of sneak away from guests if they want to and stuff like that, if they're shy or not. So cool, as we go over this way, um, we're kind of meeting up to uh, where we were just looking. Here's the old abandoned polar bear uh, enclosure. So again, it kind of makes sense that they moved it from there to just around the corner right there. So they didn't move the polar bear too far, um, but it's, yeah, more uh, encompassed in the North American section, just has overall a better uh, enclosure there. So, uh, but yeah, last up for the North American section, this is an older enclosure as well. Uh, there should be, where is he? Where's Frank? This is a moose enclosure here. So where is Frank? Dang it, Frank! I don't know where he went. <laughs> it's kind of hard to miss him. He's the he's a huge moose, huh? Anyways, um, there's normally a big old moose in here named Frank, and this used to be a um, excuse me. This used to be the uh, home to grizzly bears. So um, yeah, I, I kind of figured that since the grizzly bears got a big old brand new. Um, enclosure that we're going to see in just a minute that's kind of a still a tie into North America but it's separated through South America it's kind of weird we'll, we'll kind of talk about that more but uh but yeah this is the old grizzly bear habitat we decided to put in a moose called Frank the Tank and uh, Frank the Tank is yeah one of the biggest moose that I uh, could find in game I sat there for probably a good 45 minutes half hour or so uh trying to find a just big big moose and uh yeah it kind of takes over uh this enclosure there so yeah that kind of wraps up the main bulk of North America um, there. I guess not the main uh, section of North America, or the, all, uh, uh, excuse me, all of North America, but it's the main section of uh, North America. So there is where we just toured through there. So let's kind of go down. As we were talking about, that's not the that's not all that's left for North America. We're actually booped down this way where we were looking at the otter talks. The otter talks. The otter talks. Otter talks. I'm saying it all different ways. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, we're going to skip over this. So we're going to come back to otter talks. And this is technically South America right here. We're going to skip over that for now. And head over this way and finish out North America. So if we take this sneaky little path um, around this way. This is another little uh, building where you just... Again, probably vending machines, some little seating areas, uh, maybe some restroom and stuff like that. Um, just kind of a little uh, restroom, or restroom, or a little rest stop there. But let's head over to the uh, big, uh, another big main attraction of North America, uh, which is going to, oh yeah, I forgot you get little backstage views of the uh, otters uh, that are hanging out there sometimes. But this is going to be the, uh, you go, the big bear enclosure. You know, the big grizzly bear enclosure. I think there's two of them there. So this was also built by Wyatt Andrews. Uh, he, he did a lot of this, uh, this stuff at, at the same time. So all the North America stuff, he kind of came in and was like, hey, I have an idea for the grizzly bear habitat, the polar bear habitat, and, you know, like one other thing. I'm like, heck yeah, man. Never let me down before, right? So here's the redone up uh, polar bear habitat there. So love how this turned out. I especially love the uh, giant barrier in the background, just like the really, really, really tall uh, barrier. I think it uh, fits in really nicely. So there you go, a bunch of different uh, guest viewing areas. Uh, some of them are in use for guests, other ones are not, but you know, either way it looks kind of cool there. Here's some, a little bit of underwater. It's not really underwater, right? It's more so like, uh, just like swimming uh, view there. Here goes one of our bears into uh, the, behind the, or the backstage entrance. Here's a nice, uh, big pavilion uh, view there but yeah really really cool there as we go into the interior not too much done with the interior didn't really need to be to be honest with you um but yeah here we have the um, backstage beer enclosure there they go they're both sleeping of course but you know what i never noticed is you get a little bit of view of the um expedition asia as well from here too that's kind of cool <laughs> uh cool so there is uh that kind of formally wraps up uh, North America there. Let's go ahead and head around this way. And again, I know we're skipping a lot of the otters and stuff. We're going to actually make our way to them. We're going to go uh, this way to get there. So as we go over this way, I thought this was kind of cool. I saw this uh, at the San Diego Zoo, I think it was, um, on the side of some of their buildings. They have a, uh, a zoo bus and everything. So it's like, let us do the driving, the zoo bus. <laughs> kind of put up some advertising around as we go around our big aviary and everything. Going over here, have the runoff from the um, the bear enclosure, so that's kind of cool that it all runs together. Uh, but yeah, we start to see some little views here of the uh, South America animals. So here's the anteater and, which one is it, the Baird's tapir? Yeah, the Baird's tapir there. Uh, but let's keep going quickly through as we go into the official entrance there of the South America section. So here's the main entrance, quote unquote. There's technically two main entrances. This is what I see as like the main, main entrance. Uh, but as you are uh, come in, you're first met with a bunch of uh, leaf cutter ants, or yeah, that's yeah, leaf cutter ants and a bunch of different uh, other little uh, implied enclosures and stuff there. So there you go. 
Also have just this uh, tree kind of growing up through the rocks and everything. But yeah, any of the backside of water, but I like how this kind of turned out, this big uh, entrance area. Here we go, and here's the Ant Eater and Tapir main viewing area. Here's their enclosure. like how this one turned out a lot. I have the little uh, drinking area or little uh, water fountain area. Uh, but yeah, I like the little shared enclosure you have there. Heading out this way. Have our big main... Uh, right on, right, cowboy. Have our big main uh, view there of the uh, big terrace building. The building that kind of up on some... Uh, it's just kind of up up a little bit. I, I was noticing uh, in this section that it was very flat originally. And I wanted to kind of uh, be sure to get some buildings that kind of show a little bit of terrain differences. Uh, you know, for South America and everything. So, um, But yeah, so Thornton Hill Zoo overall is very, very flat. So try to get a little bit of terrain going through here. Not too much, but a little bit of terrain differences. And yeah, I think it makes, uh, again, a, a world of differences. You can... Um, as you can see here. So as we go through this way, let's actually take a look at the uh, was it the leopard? Um, it's a viewing area uh, first here on the lower tier. But yeah, here we go. I was talking earlier uh, as I uh, that I got a bunch of inspiration from Wyatt Andrews and uh, his uh, seal enclosure and everything. The uh, interior there and here you can see a big amount of. Uh, uh, influence everything there so there's a also is there a bathroom over here oh yeah forgot I added a little uh, restroom nook over there as well but anyways the big thing we're worried about look at it, it's actually there too here's our uh, leopard right it's the leopard jaguar excuse me jaguar yes that's what it was the uh, South American gave us the jaguar but yeah here's the uh, little behind the scenes uh, jaguar view there we'll head on up now to the uh, upper deck area. Yeah, this will just be a nice little sit-down restaurant, I think. A uh, little seating area there. Uh, obviously, the guests don't really use it too much, it seems, but, you know, it still looks pretty nice there. And I also imagine that this upper area here uh, would be almost like a members-only kind of thing. And as you come over uh, this way, there's a deck. Yes, there's a deck here that I would imagine you put some uh, some seating and everything, and uh, you have a really nice... Uh, overview of the Jaguar uh, area there. It's a little, maybe a little unrealistic because you may, you know, have to worry about guests throwing stuff into the enclosure or I don't know, maybe they'd have to uh, keep an eye on it or something like that. But either way, I think it'd be a really cool uh, overhead uh, view of the Jaguar to kind of eat dinner up there and everything. So yeah, I really like how this building uh, turned out there. So as we go back in, we have some tr uh, kind of quote unquote like traditional uh, South America I guess like houses and stuff like that. This is a quick service restaurant, so I try and do that with my areas. Try and have at least a big sit down restaurant and then like a quick service type restaurant uh, to kind of anchor the area there and then we get some more cool uh, views of the Jaguar. Here's the main big uh, views of the Jaguar habitat there. Uh, this little uh, glass area here, you get some really cool views because a lot of times uh, it'll come right up to the glass and I'll play with the uh, ball and everything right in front of you. So uh, but yeah, here's another little seating area for the quick service uh, restaurant and everything. And as we head over this way, talk about the big old dome here. So the dome, I built the structure for the dome, and then uh, Eben, uh, or Ipon, Ipon, <laughs> who's doing Thermoshati. Everyone loves Thermoshati, right? I, I have to sing it or else I don't say it right. Uh, but yeah, he did. Uh, he's doing Thermoshati. He came in and did the uh, interior there. I was just not feeling it. I uh, hit him up, and he was like, heck yeah, my dude, I'll definitely do that there. So let's go ahead and head into the uh, interior here of this little aviary um, section here. So this is the the, um, the, was it the Charles Darwin Aviary, I think we're going to call it, or the Charles Darwin House or something like that. So, uh, yeah, let's head on in, take a look at what they did there. Are there actually people in here? I think there's actually people coming in and out here. Uh, but uh, it's just always fun to see Gus actually interacting with stuff that you built. So, uh, yeah, this is, like, turned out so, so good. I love how we kept uh, some of the natural path or the natural ground and everything. Um, and you have these little uh, small implied enclosures as you come through here. It looks really cool mixture between like a uh, museum and uh, you know a zoo and everything and then we come into the big dome and we love how this turned out love 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 how it turned out and uh, kind of went the extra step there and we actually have some habitat animals in there which one is this this is the Galapagos tortoise yeah, the Galapagos giant tortoise there. I think there's one more animal. But yeah, one the extra step with the pathing, if you notice. Look at the itty bitty pathing right here. Uh, it's like two or three meter pathing and did a little, uh, small little ups and uh, downs with it too and stuff. I can imagine this being a little keeper talk area as well. But yeah, love all the foliage, how it's all uh, interacting with each other and stuff like that. Another enclosure right here. This is where I think there was something or is something where I can never really see it there. But uh, anyways, yeah, then the path kind of circles all the way around uh, the enclosure and everything. But yeah, here's a up ahead, up uh, up overview and everything above view. 
So there you go. Yeah, I think that turned out really, really um, well. So yeah, big shout out to uh, Ivan there, Ibun, for uh, uh, helping out with the interior there and everything. So cool. Let's head uh, deeper into South America as we have a nice macaw exhibit there. Got that from the workshop as well. And then, yeah, we're going to see the um, otters here. So here's the uh, interior view of the uh, otters. So they have a nice little... Ooh, there we go. little interior view here. You got underwater viewing as well. Oh, there's a bunch of otters right there. Cool. They don't hang out over there, uh, here that much. We'll see if they actually dive down and stuff. But yeah, really like how this came out. Now, this originally was a implied exhibit. Uh, so yeah, I originally built this with implied animals. And it was much smaller, much more condensed. Uh, but when we got the actual otters in game, I was like, oh, I have to come back and do it, right? Uh, basically, when I got South, when I heard the South America pack was coming out overall, I was like, well, it looks like I'm going to be expanding the uh, South America section a whole bunch. So yeah, it's about a good day or so uh, redoing or doing up this entire section of the zoo right here, uh, or this enclosure, because yeah, it, it just it took a long time to get this to work with the actual um, otters. But as you can see here, come on, do it. Come on, I'm going to speed up the time just a little bit, see if they actually use it. But as you can see, they actually uh, jump in the water and uh, you know use the entire area and stuff like that. So uh, separated it out. We have two different sections here with two different levels of water uh, so that was really where uh, the big headache was was getting the two uh, si uh, two different levels of water uh, to work out there but it was worth it. it it turned out really really cool and I think our otters uh, now have a great area to kind of swim and hang out in there so um, yeah let's see I just want to see if he's gonna dive or anything there's a few of them in there now have the time sped up come on dive <clears throat> dive while I get a drink of water <laughs> Well, either way, we all know what they look like when they dive, right? So, uh, are they, uh, nope, he's not going to do it. But anyways, let's head on out. And we'll check out the uh, last few exhibits here. Here we have the Capybara. And before we go look into the mod workshop, no, there are no Capybara yet on the uh, Nexus. These are all implied uh, there. But they still turned out great. Uh, and then, you know, it's like we had to have a, uh, a Capybara habitat there, right? So there you go, the little Capybara habitat as we come back out to where we were originally when we were going over to the, uh, the grizzly bears and everything. So let's go ahead and do our routine little boop out here so you can see the South America section. South America is really dense there in the uh, in the woods and everything. Really, really dense. And that's how I like it, right? That's It should be kind of looking like that. So there you go. There's South America right through there. You can kind of tell where it is, but kind of hard to tell. But So there you go. Um, let's go ahead and boop out a little bit further to kind of get our readjustment to where we want to go. You know what I think we're going to do is I think we're going to go back out to, yeah, let's go back out to the fountain here. That's a nice little lance or a nice little monument for everyone to remember. We're going to go back out to more of the center of the zoo. So the, the fountain is pretty center of the zoo, but I'll say that the carousel is even more center of the zoo. So here we go. There's some new stuff over here as well. So get your... Ooh, jeez, we're right in the woods. Uh, get your bearings here of where we're at overall. <clears throat> we are just north of the uh, Sheets Aquarium. So yeah, just, just a little bit north of Sheets Aquarium there. So as we come up here, more of the classic zoo, but we have the uh, um, little restaurants, little gift shop areas. So I kind of saw these in... Uh, what was it? Central Park, that's right, Central Park. Uh, so I had a lot of these little uh, eateries and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, kind of wanted to put these little buildings there for eateries and um, essentially this little gift shop. So is this the one that's in use? No, these are both eateries. So that was in the old save file before I lost it. Um, I'll try to remember, I'm going to put an information booth in here because it actually fits in perfectly right there. So I guess we'll actually uh, use it. But yeah, there's this little uh, center plaza there. Uh, for our uh, for our guests, and I imagine a lot of uh, guests will be using the little carousel there because carousels are almost a staple of at least American zoos. Uh, over here, these buildings you've been getting little peeks of uh, throughout the tour there. This is the um, old university section, so uh, or old college campus or something. I imagine that this zoo used to be um, kind of a uh, I don't know what you want to, I don't know what the word is, but anyways, used to have like uh, veterinary classes and like zookeepers would get trained here and uh, kind of, maybe, you know, maybe they still do, but they don't use these buildings as much anymore. But yeah, these buildings have been with the zoo for, you know, a long, long, long time and were used for, uh, yeah, a lot of educational purposes. Nowadays, um, used for, I guess, still educational purposes, but more so like when a group of kids comes, maybe they want to pull them aside for like an hour and, you know, they have to go into the, I think I named this one the Carlos G. Yeah, they have to go into the Carlos G72 Education Center and, you know, watch a film or they're going to meet an animal ambassador in there or something like that. So that's more so what I uh, picture it used today and just kind of a general uh, hangout section. And maybe actually this building here would maybe be a... Uh, administrative building or something like that or maybe the uh, head zoo 
you know, the upper zoo people or whatever would kind of hang out in this building. But yeah, just, just kind of an uh, old education complex there uh, overall. But let's go and spin around. And we're not going to go into guest view too much for this one, but because uh, there's no animals or anything. But this is the, what did I call this? Northwoods Adventure area? Yeah, this is all the Northwoods Adventures. So this is a big guest interaction only uh, section. Some educational type um, things, but yeah, mainly focused on the guests uh, for this section there. So this is a big old playground for the uh, kids to run around in. I just have a good old time there, a bunch of slides, there's a little underground cave section here that you can kind of fly through. Took a lot of inspiration from just little playgrounds that I visited as a kid and everything there, but you can kind of come through here, you know, it feels uh, dark out to have the lights on and everything, but uh, yeah, nice little playground for the kids to run around there. Next to it, have a, oh geez, so, so uh, wood, uh, wooded back here. Next to it over here we have the splash pad. And this, this is a lot of fun to make. I don't know how uh, realistic this is to kind of have this in the middle of the zoo. Uh, but I guess you see zoos with splash pads, don't you? So, uh, But anyways, yeah, here's a big old uh, kind of uh, lighthouse themed or maritime kind of themed splash pad there. Where you'll get totally soaked there. And here's the only Frank that I'm going to keep in because we have Lazy Frank. I always come back and point this Frank out because we have, we have Relax and Frank. <laughs> if y'all don't know Frank, he's our... Um, He's our blueprint piece made by Mr. Domez there for uh, size comparison whenever you're building everything to build and scale. But it's always funny because you always leave Franks around um, on accident. But I thought it'd be funny to have a lounging there, a lounging Frank on the uh, splash pad. So he can stay. I guess he can stay. So. <laughs> uh, as we go through here, two little aviaries, nothing in them uh, really. Didn't put any implied animals or anything. So kind of fly by those. And then over here, this was really, really fun to make. And I've seen a few other zoos start to put these in um, as well. Not real zoos, but like uh, people's zoos that, um, that I've been uh, kind of touring for the community showcase. But yeah, I have a nice little uh, ropes course here. So this would be an upcharge uh, attraction. Those other two would not be an upcharge attraction. Uh, but yeah, this would be a nice little upcharge attraction. We'll actually go through it there. I don't know how many tickets to buy. I'm going to buy one overall pass, please, for however many people watch this video. Uh, so yeah, overall, you start here. Kind of climb up the uh, ladders and everything. Get yourself hooked in. There you go, you start going through, uh, through this way, go through the little rope tunnel there. Uh, yeah, just took a lot of inspiration from, uh, I think it was a lot of like Tennessee and uh, Arkansas, and there's a lot of uh, mountainous kind of areas uh, in the U.S. that have these really cool uh, ropes courses there and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it was a nice little addition, something kind of unique to put into the zoo. And again, it would be really cool if the guests could use it. Just kind of picture down here as you're walking by, seeing someone kind of going through there, or, you know, over here is the ending uh, of it, you kind of hook your... Over there. there we go. Got to hook your line up right there and whoosh, fly right over here into the, uh, what this is supposed to be a little pad there. You can, literally, I was watching videos of it, people fly into it and there's like these pillow pads right there. You just go, boom, you run, you run right into it, full force, and then you kind of get uh, pulled in by a, there'd be a person right here. And they just grab you by your belt buckle, basically, and, come on, buddy, and they just yank you right into the uh, thing there, and then you're all done. <laughs> and you're all done. So, cool, let's go, um, head over this way, though, get some more animal action going, right? And we're going to go ahead and check out the Reptile House. And uh, I know I keep saying it because this is kind of a fun retrospective for me to kind of come back and see old builds. But this was a lot of fun to do. This is when I really, really uh, got into interiors um, heavily. Uh, and kind of see the, uh, the opportunity of doing interiors and everything like that. So yeah, here's our uh, Reptile House. But don't forget, it closes one hour before the zoo closes. So uh, be sure to get in here before then. Uh, but yeah, this is... Um, uh, let's see, what do we have over here? Some of these South America frogs and everything. Was What are they called? The red eye tree frog. I'm pretty sure that came from the, um, the South America pack. But yeah, we did a lot of implied exhibits in here too. But this is not one. This is a habitat with the Komodo dragon. Is it in here? Uh, no, it's not. There's a few animals that have been booped out for whatever reason. Like they just really weren't meshing well with their small uh, little habitat. This is a very small habitat. It doesn't have much traversability. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, so yeah, some of them just like booped themselves out or whatever. But these over here, none of these have animals in them. But that's on purpose. If you notice, these are very, very tiny. Um, so yeah, these are implied exhibits there because I wanted to try and cram in a lot of uh, animals. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive because there's not actual animals, but a lot of enclosures, I should say. Because you often see in, especially reptile houses or houses in general, uh, there'll be a bunch of different enclosures in there. And unfortunately, um, the in-game 
exhibits, that's what they're called, the small exhibits are not very small at all, they're 4 meter by 4 meter boxes, which is very, very large, so maybe even uh, reduce the size of these down a lot, so uh, this is more in line, and even smaller than that, like you've seen, uh, these are more in line with the uh, size that I would like them to be, to kind of fill out um, our houses with even more um, animals, and another example here, these are even more enclosures right here, that the keepers can kind of come and uh, take these animals out a little bit more to show off at certain types of day, but um, yeah, it would just be great if we could get some more small enclosure, or small animal type things to uh, fill in these uh, type of enclosures so <clears throat> there we go I've been talking for a while my voice is starting to go a little bit we're, we're kind of wrapping up a little bit not really kind of I'll turn into the fragile desert another little <clears throat> part of our reptile house here so here is the uh, desert reptiles there so nice view there and I can just imagine as you come in here nice and hot right you can feel the not humidity but just that dry heat you know when you go into a zoo and it's uh, gonna be really hot like a desert area and they have the uh, not the AC but the heater just brah, just running full blast you can feel the dry heat just smack you in the face totally picture that with this so a bunch of implied enclosures as we kind of walk around here uh, again nothing in them at the moment but you know be cool one day to get some small little desert reptiles to kind of throw into these there but yeah so overall that is the uh reptile house there so cool there you go so let's get a boop out of the zoo overall because we just looked at a big old section of it there so we have covered probably about half a little over half we've covered honestly yeah where the camera is is just about except for that section over there um this is about all that we've covered so far so there you go let's take a little bit of a break from the guest areas and actually show off some new stuff that basically no one has seen because i did this all right before um this tour video and everything so that's going to be the backstage area so let's head on over this way power the power lines for where we're going <clears throat> but yeah here's the uh big main backstage so there's a lot of little backstage areas um all through oh, oops i uh, hit t I mean, actually you know what I, I also noticed i didn't get rid of these but yeah there's a lot of little backstage areas throughout the zoo but um <clears throat> i imagine there would be a big main like shipping receiving or just big main uh area for the uh, big backstage area for the zoo that's what i was trying to spit out there at least in theme parks you'll have that as well where there's a lot of small backstage areas but then like main one main large shipping receiving kind of area so had a lot of fun i love doing backstage areas uh kind of dirtying it up you know making it look nice and jank and getting uh yeah just again really like doing um backstage areas there what is that right there look at all this random stuff everyone oh it's a random attached piece we're just gonna get rid of it real quick right now Boom! Nice, see? Live building. Or not building. <laughs> uh, so anyways, here's the, uh, again, just the nice little backstage there. A uh, lot, a lot, a lot of blueprint items. Uh, and if you type in backstage in the um, workshop, you're going to get a ton of awesome stuff there to uh, to use. So yeah, there's our uh, main backstage area for the zoo. And now that we're over here, we're actually going to start to move into Africa. So Africa is going to be um, divided up into three distinct areas. Well, semi-distinct ones. One of them is very distinct. The other two kind of meld into each other. Um, but yeah, just get your bearings here. So here's the reptile house right there. Um, so here is the... We're going to go into... Yeah, again, the three distinct areas of Africa. So the first one is going to be the jungles of Africa. And remember, we saw the sign that Wyatt Andrews made us earlier. So here's the jungles of Africa section right over this way. Then we're going to move into the forests of Africa, which is a much smaller section uh, right over this way. And then the largest of the uh, African sections, which is the savanna of Africa there. So, but first, let's head on over to the jungles of Africa, because we were over by the backstage area, and we already saw the sign that Wyatt made for us and everything. <clears throat> I'm going to try and clear my throat just a little bit more. Come on, voice. We're so close. We're so close. These last few sections, we're going to kind of not fly, fly through, but... Um, yeah, they're going to go a little bit quicker, I think. So as we go into the jungles of Africa here, uh, the first enclosure that we have is the Pygmy Hippo. Um, and this was, um, it's kind of interesting to look back at this one because my enclosure design was not that great for this enclosure here. Because main reason being, uh, if we go down to the guest view, <clears throat> you're going to notice you can't really see them. I think there's one right there, but a lot of times they'll hang out on the back side of this hill there and you cannot see them. Uh, hardly ever so that's kind of cool for the hippos right and that was my mindset i was like really into this naturalistic like build it wasn't really a zoo build but more of a natural habitat build but it doesn't work for guest view really 
So that's just kind of a, um, I left it, you know, I could have come back and redid it, but I left it just to, like, I'm learning <laughs> kind of thing. I'm evolving my builds. Um, but yeah, so um, sometimes you get good views of them, uh, sometimes you don't. So if you uh, come to Thornton Hills Zoo and from a guest view, you happen to see our pygmy hippos kind of walking in the background, consider yourself lucky there. So um, yeah, this building here, this was used uh, in my cheetah uh, habitat build. When I used to do a lot of a uh, animal one-off uh, builds, I used this for the cheetah build there. Pretty sure there's a interior as well. Yeah, nice little uh, interior here as well. So there you go. Nothing too, too special, but cool. Let's head on out. Cross the bridge as we head over to what's probably the... Did you hear the elephant way over here? Oh, dang. Um, but have we ha as we head over to the main area, do you get better views of the pygmy hippos over here? Not really. You know what? Actually, if I took this plant and deleted it, you actually do get kind of okay views. I would... I like how I'm like right now like redesigning this in my head. I totally like would block this a little bit more and get the hippos to save more over here. Hey, there's a hippo right there. Look at that. Screw everything I said before. You see the hippos all the time. Anyways, uh, moving this way, uh, let's go to the main pole, the main attraction for Gorilla Trail, and that's or for the Jungles of Africa, which is gonna be uh, Gorilla Trail. Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and head on in and go right to left for it. So, uh, first little use of aviaries. I think this was built by Moblung on the workshop. Uh, but yeah, uh, first little use of using uh, aviaries throughout the zoo. The, the idea finally crept into my head like, hey, we should totally put a bunch of aviaries um, in between uh, different enclosures so that it looks uh, like it's more filled out and everything. But uh, anyways, yeah, as we're going down Gor Gorilla Trail, this was also when I started to notice um, zoos doing trails like this or just kind of having, yeah, themed... Uh, trails where you see a you have like a main animal attraction but as you're going you have like different birds different small animals uh, and stuff like that along the way but yeah, here's your first big view of our uh, gorilla enclosure and everything there so yeah, i'm pretty happy with how this turned out but you know again it's uh in a retrospective kind of thing i would have made this kind of the last thing that you see if anything i would have made it more subtle when you see it so maybe put a lot more trees through here and just get a little peekaboo uh views of the main gorilla habitat and i would have made this a lot bigger as well uh, but anyways you know that's neither here nor there it's more um uh, bird aviaries and everything like that nice little view there of the backstage Woo -hoo. um and as we come in here here is an area that just uh i ran out of room i ran out of room ran out of time to redo the interior you can see i got all the infrastructure set up but i just ran out of uh, in inspiration and I, I wanted to get the video done but i was starting to redo this whole lemur interior here um for the video but i was just like ugh you know what, I'm done, it's fine, <laughs> let's move on. So here's our lemur, another little lemur um, interior, and our lemurs have a good interior um, already with our small animal habitat, right? So, but anyways, yeah, here's a kind of a, a half done up area, so we're gonna kind of fly through there a little bit. Over to the next viewing area for the gorillas. Now here's where like the big view, like the big main reveal there. That That's a nice one right there. You get the big reveal of it there. Um, you know, it's kind of funny also, as I'm uh, remembering, remember when we got the dirty water thing, or the dirty water uh, waterfall from South America pack or something else? It's funny because that's obsolete now too because we can change the waterfall colors uh, whenever we want to with the new uh, water color changing thing. So, uh, But cool, let's go ahead and head on into the fruit bat area. Obviously we don't have bats in the game yet. Even with mods we don't have uh, bats or anything yet. But that would be kind of cool to incorporate them into our um, kind of gorilla area because I kind of think they fit into the uh, theme and everything. So here's our uh, fruit bat enclosure there. I love how this turned out. It's just with the little uh, pockets here, the little holes. You can imagine that's where the bats would be hanging out. Or if um, we had little prop bats to put in, uh, imagine them hanging off the tree branches and stuff. So yeah, a little creepy uh, bat mm -hmm. area there. Also something to be cool is, um, especially in future zoo planning for interiors like this, is getting little microphones or little uh, speakers. Uh, I, know, I know a lot of zoos will set up um, yeah, microphones inside of the enclosure so you can hear the uh, animals uh, from guest view and everything like that. So you can kind of hear the bats and uh, other animals and stuff like that. But cool, let's uh, go ahead and head on out. <clears throat> and this is the uh, probably the best view you get of the gorillas probably and also the best chance to fall in uh, but this is the best view of the gorillas uh, that you get there so very nice and we'll keep heading back this way as there's more as we get a little backstage view of the gorillas too so there you go cool so yeah this is again my first little dabble into uh, interiors definitely not done up too too much but it, it, it works we'll give it a solid it works right so cool let's head on out and that does it for gorilla trail there as we head um, back this way, we have a nice little uh, restaurant, little stopping ground. Again, you know, I'm all about the little rush, uh, restroom or uh, 
rest stop uh, kind of areas there. So yeah, if you guys want to, they can kind of head on over to the uh, restaurant. Oh yeah, that's right, it has two stories, that's right. So yeah, the upper uh, deck here. I love this upper deck. Where is it? This uh, seat right over here? Yeah, this, this seat right here. I probably just hang out here for like a lot of the day. I just love the kind of, uh, the people watch. That's right, this will be my people watching area. It's, it's always fun to people watch, right? <laughs> you don't go to zoos just to watch the, uh, the animals. You go to zoos and other places to people watch as well, because uh, humans are sometimes the most interesting animal to uh, kind of watch there. <laughs> so cool, let's go over to this way here. No official name for this trail, but this is a, another trail. This would be Mandrill Trail. Um, but yeah, let's head over here. Again, more aviary uh, playing around with. Started to do aquariums too. I uh, haven't really dabbled too much in aquariums all that often, but I kind of need to do that more um, more often uh, for sure. But yeah, here's a big old aquarium as you're walking through here. Love how this turned out with the uh, lights and everything. I know this went over uh, well with a lot of people. Don't know what's going on here, but there's some some boogeyman. Uh, nonsense going on right there. Turn the lights back on as we come out here. A lot of aviaries and fish as we come through here. I got real obsessed with doing uh, aviaries. Uh, right, when I, right when I kind of built my own and could have uh, replicated around uh, easily, I was like, oh, I'm going to put aviaries everywhere. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, cool. So head over this way. This way. Uh, here we go. I have the mandrills. Get a look at there. Oh, man. Y'all are stuck inside the mandrill habitat. Have fun. Have fun. Also get some views as we're going to be walking over that way uh, later on. But yeah, let's get a above view of this area. There you go. There's the whole mandrill habitat, little walkway that leads back over to the, um, uh, excuse me, to the, uh, uh, what is that called? The tree walking area. Oh my gosh, my brain's going kaput. I've been talking for so long now. <laughs> this is going to be a long tour, isn't it? This is a long tour. But cool. All right, let's head on out of the jungles of Africa and head into the forests of Africa. We'll go the back way a little bit. Actually, before we do, we're going to get an above view of the dino trail so this is at least in a lot of the zoos, uh, zoos i've been to uh, they have these old rickety dino trails with these old uh just yeah animatronic sometimes not animatronic kind of dinos there and everything so here's our dino trail a lot of the dinos taken from the workshop i reduced the color on them so they look really like pastel almost uh, there's one actual animal quote unquote actual animal it's actually a um, implied um, a, uh, animal it's the condor or condor or vulture I can't remember either way it kind of fits in with the dinosaur theme but oh uh, yeah these dinosaurs kind of uh, backed off the color so they look really old and they even actually one of them will show one of them off uh, specifically has its eye missing so when you're going through here no I didn't do this um, on accident that's on purpose I wanted it to look like the dinosaur kind of lost its eye there because it's so old so anyways, yeah nice little dino trail let's go through then yeah let's go to the forests of Africa and the first thing we're going to look at here is the Wyatt Andrews Research Center, I believe it's called. Yes. So this is the Wyatt Andrews Research Center. And uh, actually, before we head on in there, we'll get above view here. Uh, shout out to Carlos G for this area. So I did the initial kind of mock-up. I did the layout of everything. I did a lot of like where the habitats were, were going to go. Um, I even did some of the initial builds, like this, the structure for this building, the structure for this building. But then Carlos came in and was like, hey man, I have some really, really cool ideas I think you'll like. And Carlos at this point had done a lot of great builds uh, for Thornton Hills Zeus. I was like, heck yes, my friend. Come on in there and do it up there. So, uh, but like I said, let's start over here with the Wyatt Andrews Research Center um, and look at the interior there because he did some awesome stuff with our chimpanzee enclosure. Actually, you can see the chimpanzee uh, chimpanzees right there. But let's go ahead into the interior real quick and take a look at that. And over here, boom, there's the door. Bam! So head on. Look at this interior. Isn't this just? Oh, I remember he was sending over um, pictures and everything. Just the uh, the amount of infrastructure he's putting on, like with the holding up the glass, and the roof, and everything. I was just like, oh wow, that looks so good. It looks so stinking good. Uh, but go over here and get these really, really great views. Also have uh, access for all of our guests and everything. Have an elevator there because uh, there's stairs here. But uh, you have uh, really good views of the uh, chips as they're hanging out there. Look at them in their groups. Cool. They're usually uh, not out like this. They're, a lot of times they're in their backstage uh, area, which we're going to get a look at in just a little bit because Carlos went ahead and did a backstage for this area as well. But let's go ahead and go through there. There it is, a little sneaky door. It's one of those doors that you almost wouldn't notice is there. Or you'd think like, oh, I don't know if I can go back there or not. But yep, you totally can. And here we have some more awesome Carlos G interior goodness here. Look at this. Look at this. Looks so good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here, I love this split version here. We get the split vision of the, uh, this is where the chimps just kind of hang out 
in their like on stage backstage kind of thing and then this is their full on backstage and here's where all the keepers get to go look at all the uh, details here the computers the chairs the um, all the separate enclosures and everything oh it looks really really good can't get over that can never get it always just blows me away that's what i was saying earlier right it's just like oh yeah that's in my zoo that person built that in my zoo. That's crazy. <laughs> um, but cool, over this... Whoa, oh my gosh, I'm totally lost in the canopy now. There we go. Um, on the back side here, I also built up a bunch more aviaries. So there's at least, what, three or four different aviaries there with implied uh, birds and stuff. And it just goes to show, like, really how much uh, little aviaries, even though they don't have anything inside them, uh, even though they're, like, maybe implied uh, exhibits, it just adds in, like, a lot more, you know, enclosure count or animal count here. Uh, so here we have the Nile Monitor. Not sure where they're at. Sometimes they're underwater. Sometimes... Oh, wait, was that one right there? No. <laughs> Are they over here? No. Uh, but I really like how this looks because it looks like the two enclosures. You can see where it's separated right there. But it looks like the chimpanzee enclosure and the Nile monitor enclosure like run right into each other. It's really cool. Really, really cool. Over here we have the... Uh, something. Another primate of some sort. I can't remember the other uh, primate name. The bee one. Oh, my goodness. Are they, in are they inside? Where are all my animals? <laughs> I swear, all the animals are have for some reason. Yeah, that's empty too. I have no idea why half the enclosures just don't have animals in them uh, anymore. But anyways, that was home to the uh, what the heck is the bee? Uh, <laughs> the bee primate. I know everyone is typing in chat right now. It's this one. It's this one. It's this one. <laughs> like I know. <laughs> Not the Binturong. Oh, it's going to drive me. There we go. The Bonobo. Wow, that's an animal I've hardly ever used. Um, you can tell there. But yeah, normally there's Bonobo in here. Not sure where they went. Um, but anyways, yeah, so there's their enclosure there. Also get a nice little uh, underwater viewing for the Nile Monitor. Just to swing. There we go. So there you go. I thought we might be able to see him, but I think they're out of here too. I'm not sure what's going on. It seems like whenever I log into uh, Planet Zoo, something else uh, weird is going on. And now it's... Um, uh, animals just kind of randomly being out of the enclosure there. So uh, over here we also have a uh, another implied enclosure in this interior, which I love this interior that Carlos did here. Uh, I think it was for the um, for a crocodile or something like that, for a small like dwarf crocodile. Um, up here, <clears throat> another one of those structures that um, I built the shell for, but Carlos came in and did the interior. There you go. Look at that. Nice, really cool like African uh, museum section there. Really, really cool. Also over here, built a nice little dockside quick service uh, restaurant. Love that. I hear an animal that wants to get taken out. I'm not sure what it is. There's some animal that's boxed in over, here, over this way somewhere. Uh, so there you go. I think that goes ahead. Yeah, that does the uh, jungles and forests of Africa. And then we're going to go ahead and move. I know I'm going a little bit quicker and not so much because I looked at the time. I saw how long this uh, tour has been. I'm like, oh my goodness, it really is that long. Um, so we're going to go a little bit quicker. But here is the savanna of Africa. We'll show you the main, here's the main um, entrance area here, main sign. So we enter in over this way. And yeah, this is definitely the biggest area of the um, of Africa this section there so here's the um, big main uh, plaza area this is also taken from that one-off cheetah build that I did and just kind of readjusted it a little bit have a big main restaurant that's back there that's where all those people are going also did up a nice uh, pride of uh, Africa gift shop here and I actually got had some time to do this up so this is all brand brand new here so like how this turned out um, yeah could have done a little bit more I had a few other ideas um, for this little section over here but yeah I really like how this whole thing turned out there Go through here with a little register and everything. Frank is here to shoot your eye out if you don't pay on time. <laughs> there you go. But cool. So there is the uh, little bit of new stuff there. But here's the big overall look at uh, the uh, the savanna of Africa main attraction, which is kind of the uh, elephants and the uh, savanna. So as you come in here, you get these really cool upper views here. Got to kind of mess with the terrain and everything. Get these really cool upper views of the uh, elephant uh, paddock there. And as we go over this way where these people are walking, you get this other cool view. First, we get to see the hyenas just over off this, uh, off to the side. But yeah, you get this really cool upper view of the uh, elephants right over this way. There they are. Cool, people are actually using it. Yeah, I, just, I was really getting into doing more terrain work uh, in Thornton Hills Zoo because I realized it was very, very flat. This seemed like a really good area to, uh, to do it there. And then, yeah, that's where the big bridge over top goes. But yeah, I love how this uh, elephant enclosure uh, turned out there. So there you go. Big overview of the... Uh, elephant enclosure. There we go. As we go over this way, kind of back up, 
It's really cool seeing the guests actually like viewing and everything. I haven't like guessed, guessed into the zoo for a long time, so to actually see them like using the views uh, and like yeah, just like viewing the animals and stuff. It's just I know it's simple, but it's like oh, it's so cool. I like how there's more guests viewing the tortoise right here, this little one-off enclosure, than there are viewing the uh, elephants at the moment. That's you know that's how it goes. But <laughs> another little just aviary tortoise little habitat um, over there. Here's our cheetah viewing uh, section, a cheetah run. So yeah, here's the Cheetah Hut and Cheetah Run area for our Cheetah enclosure. How many more times can I say Cheetah in a thing? I think it was Crocs here that did the um, Cheetah Run sign, which is really cool. Love how this turned out there. A lot of really cool uh, details. So yeah, shout out to Crocs for making the uh, really cool Cheetah Run sign. This leads over to this little grandstand because, yeah, I think it would be cool. Um, obviously, we can't schedule this in game, but I think it would be cool to have a, yeah, just like a keeper. Uh, my Cheetahs aren't in game. Oh, yeah, they are. I was about to freak out. <laughs> There's a cheetah right there. I was like, there's no cheetah in the enclosure either. Stop taking all my animals out. No, it's all good. Uh, but yeah, you uh, imagine zookeepers come over here uh, and yeah, put on a little uh, show if the uh, cheetahs wanted to, to uh, yeah, chase down the, uh, what is it? They usually have like a little furry, like uh, animal thing that just goes, meow, uh, whips over there and they kind of chase it down. So I thought that was a cool little idea where the guests could sit over there. Um, over here we have the hippos. This is a lot of fun to make. Actually, um, I kind of came back and redone this because all these rocks here are uh, were done by, shout out to Nicholas Lionrider who made the very first faux rock in Planet Zoo. He made a whole set of faux rocks. Here's a good look at them. Um, in Planet Zoo. And I think it was like a week later that Planet Zoo officially like announced the actual faux rocks or something like that. But anyways, yeah, so I built the entire um, enclosure out of uh, the faux rocks there, and I decided to keep them because it's a bit of a uh, Planet Zoo lore, Planet Zoo history, right? So uh, there you go, there's our hippo habitat there. And then let's see what else we're leading out to. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh yeah, and here's uh, one of the other, shut up, elephant's gone. I'm trying to talk about the drafts and stuff. Here's the other really big uh, draw for the area. That is going to be the Savannah uh, enclosure. So this was taken inspiration, uh, the inspiration for this was the Columbus Zoo, I believe it is. The Columbus Zoo has a ginormous uh, Savannah uh, habitat there. And uh, yeah, this wraps all the way around, all the way to about right where those rocks are. So. Oh yeah, this is kind of the watering hole section there. We also get um, kind of a uh, little bit of a risky, but um, right through here, sometimes they uh, get cool little views, but there's sometimes a lion that will come up here because there's actually a sneaky lion habitat right through here. You see, oh, there they are right there. But yeah, sneaky lion habitat right through here. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a, you know, you have the lion habitat right in the middle of the savanna habitat. A little bit of a torment for the lions probably, but you know, um, <laughs> there's a lot of underground uh, viewing, um, or uh, walkways right through here as well. Kind of come down here and get some views, I think. Yeah. There you go. Really cool, actually. Get some really nice views there. <clears throat> of the lions hanging out. Watch out, keeper! Ah, whatever, you're toast. So, <laughs> uh, as we come over this way, let's see. Oh, that's right, we have two uh, elephant paddocks. I was trying to remember if I uh, showed this off, but um, over here we have the bulls. So we have the, our elephants separated into two different paddocks there. So we have the uh, females there, and then we have our males, the bulls. So um, they can kind of come out over this way. They can't fit through that area right there. It's for the keepers. Um, but yeah, they lead over to this big old um, elephant paddock uh, there. So yeah, there's our two different <clears throat> elephant uh, enclosures there. Have a uh, keeper talk as well. Whoa, we got a running elephant. <laughs> uh, big old uh, restaurant in the middle there. We can get some, again, probably members only uh, seating. Because again, can you imagine these kind of views right here of being able to watch the elephants and everything that's it right there <laughs> that's the stuff right there um cool so there is that let's see get another um some other big views of the african savannah so there's a bunch of different animals uh, in the savannah i think the big main star at least there she is uh, the big main star of the savannah i think is sugar here so sugar was always the big main uh, draw for the streams. Uh, but yeah, it's our albino ostrich uh, named Sugar. So yeah, I think that everyone would love to go to the zoo to see uh, Sugar in the savanna. Uh, yeah, in the African savanna there. So also made a nice backstage uh, area here for the savanna section. Uh, really liked how this turned out. 
not it's not in use or anything like that but you know it just kind of sells the idea here of this uh, big savannah section needing a big backstage uh, anchor point for it there so yeah like how that turned out a lot there um, its neighbors the uh, savannah actually has some neighbors which is going to be the uh, quote-unquote African rhino but you know in game it's the Indian uh, rhino but I guess we have the mod now for the black rhino from uh, some people I can't remember who made it there but uh, I guess we could technically put in the black rhino if you wanted to so uh, but yeah does that go ahead and wrap up that wraps up yeah the african section there overall again i know i kind of did the uh, spark notes version of a lot of it but uh yeah again noticing the time uh that we've been recording is uh ever approaching the hour and a half to two hour mark which is crazy um but cool so there is the savannah or the african section all the way through there definitely the biggest part of the uh zoo but I always knew it was going to be the biggest part of the zoo because especially with the savannah section and um yeah just the the big africa area it's going to take up uh, a lot of the uh, zoo there so Cool, let's go ahead and look at, I believe, the last section, and the, the section that I like probably the most, uh, which is going to be the entire south end of the zoo and Expedition Asia, all built by Wyatt Andrews. So yeah, all of this was built by Wyatt Andrews, and I'm definitely going to be doing a shortened version of this tour. There is about an hour tour of just this section alone with Wyatt and uh, myself there, so if you want to check that out, be sure to go back and watch that video. Uh, but yeah, love this um, south entrance there. Um, yeah, I wanted to have two entrances to uh, Thornton Hill Zoo there, and uh, yeah, this turned out so so well perfect uh, second entrance there for Thornton Hill Zoo but here is the big draw here which is Expedition Asia and just I can't get over just how amazing it is between the, the aviary over here the big gorilla um, enclosure I, just, there, I can't ever pinpoint what my favorite bit is I'm gonna try as we're going through here but you know it's, it's very hard to uh, pinpoint it there <laughs> um, so yeah just, here we go going through here uh, again if you want to watch this Big ol' hour, hour and ten minutes. Oh, look at me, actually, I have an orangutan up there. Actually, okay, this is my favorite part right here. This is my favorite part, decided. Um, but yeah, look at that. Just look at that. There's also interiors to everything. Uh, comprehensive backstages and everything like that. Look at this. Really quick. We can even see him sleeping down there a little bit. But we're here to see him climb. Oh, right there. And oh, yeah, look at the cityscape in the back there. That also adds a whole bunch. Uh, why I added that in. And that just adds in so much. Like, boom, right there. There's your screenshot right there. If you want to make a uh, desktop background <laughs> uh, but yeah there's so much to this area it's it's basically a zoo within itself right there's so much uh detail and everything it's basically uh, an entire zoo uh within itself with the amount of detail and stuff so yeah this whole section was um, um split into different uh phases so this is like phase one right through here and you can definitely tell the uh difference um in the fields and everything there's a bunch of little, little implied exhibits uh but you can tell the feel as we go through, here's phase two, which is Tiger's Edge. Oh, this is actually so cool too, though, right? This might be my favorite section. But even, whenever I see the orangutans, though, um, walk across there, it's, it, it always gets me. But yeah, here's Tiger's Edge. Ah, all of it just looks so good. I can never pinpoint what's my favorite. <laughs> Little scenery bits all around. Usually get some... If you're lucky, there's a story through here too. That's right. There's a really cool story um, to tell the uh, to tell throughout here. But if you're lucky enough, you can see the uh, tiger through here. Really good use of uh, different uh, habitats being close to each other. Because if you look, there's actually a moat between the tiger habitat and our kind of more not savanna but uh, more multi-animal uh, enclosure there, right? Because you can't have the uh, can't have those too close there. So yeah, that's a really sneaky uh, way to get. Oh, look at, look at, look at, it's actually right there. I can't believe that we actually get to see a tiger right there. But yeah, real sneaky way to get um, the two enclosures separated uh, through there. Let's walk, keep walking. Here's some of the, uh, was it shared by monkeys? Yeah, the capuchin monkeys and the otters share this enclosure there. So cool. <laughs> Here's your big bazaar, looks amazing. The panthera bazaar. Come over this way, tell them the story about uh, deforestation a little bit more. We can get some more views of the, uh, like the savanna section, I guess you say. And here's the third uh, phase there with the pandas. So yeah, you know the zoo would ch uh, chalk out a bunch of money for the panda habitat here. Fit with uh, interior only for the pandas to be here for like, what, three or four years or something like that before they had to be returned. Uh, but yeah, here's the big old panda habitat with amazing interior as well. I know I'm going by it all so, so fast, but... Um, be sure to watch the video or tour it yourself there uh, going through here and yeah that kind of wraps up the official Expedition Asia uh, section but I went ahead and added in after we got the sea pack I added in the uh, sun bear enclosure right at the edge of it 
And I thought it'd be kind of a cool idea to put, uh, make this a older uh, looking enclosure, especially compared to um, the awesome new enclosures um, of Expedition Asia. Um, but yeah, put, put it in an older enclosure because maybe they didn't quite get Expedition Asia like expanded out, or this is going to expand out uh, Expedition Asia to this section over here and redo the Sun Bear and a few other things because there's a few plots of land um, available over this way. So um, yeah, again, I know I went over that so, so fast. Um, there's so many tiny, um, uh, brilliant details at why it did uh, through this entire section. But So be sure to uh, watch that video or, um, again, uh, explore all the nitty-gritty details there for yourself uh, there. But overall oh my heck did we do it yeah yeah we did it that's it okay overall that's it everyone that is Thornton Hill Zoo so just this is the part that I was like kind of dreading because it's like how do I wrap this up now it's like I've never actually formally wrapped up a big main scale project like this even Planet Coaster um, I had two big scale projects that never really got wrapped up. They were really close, but just kind of never uh, got there. So yeah, this is my first Planet Series uh, build that is fully done there. So I mean, yeah, there, I, I've thanked a lot of the builders along the way, but you know, big, big shout out to Wyatt Andrews Workshop for uh, being really on step with me, being really in tune with me, um, what I kind of had going with the zoo along the way. Because whenever I was kind of not feeling something, he kind of stepped me like, hey, I have an idea. And he'd be like, hey, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking. I just don't have the motivation to build so big shout out to him uh be, definitely be working with uh, Wyatt Andrews in the future there shout out to Carlos G72 for all the amazing builds that you have done in the zoo a lot of interior work and an entire section of the zoo that you redid there and everything so awesome there big shout out to uh Eben as well for uh, coming in and redoing some South America stuff, doing that interior, um, for, yeah, for the South American dome and everything there. So that was really, really awesome. So yeah, those are the big, big three that I wanted to thank for coming in and redoing some stuff. Uh, shout out to Nicholas Lion Rider and Leaf for getting me into some mods because the last section of the zoo, especially the uh, birdhouse and uh, yeah, essentially this entire last section right here, uh, would not have been done or would have been a lot different um, if it wasn't for those two and, and Jesse and a lot of the other people in the modding community. A lot of them modders overall um, for yeah really getting me into mods and using uh, some of these fun standalone mods there to finish out the zoo there so and yeah and also you know big thanks to everyone who ever commented some ideas I've used a lot of your ideas uh, for Thornton Hills Zoo if you haven't noticed um, so I'm always taking your feedback so yeah really big shout out to anyone that's uh, suggested uh, you know an idea that's commented on the video that's always said you know a nice word about Thornton Hills Zoo or anything like that really appreciate it there um, and yeah I guess that's gonna do it right so again if you are wondering and if you haven't heard me this entire time, yes, this will be on the workshop. You can definitely download it. Do know this is a big zoo. It's going to take you a while. It takes me on my decent rig uh, about five to ten minutes. Uh, five to ten minutes, depending how uh, the computer's feeling. So, um, yeah, just give yourself some time or uh, just take this tour video as, you know, the tour of the zoo. But, um, yeah, if you are downloading it, it is a monster of a project. So it is going to take you uh, quite a long time there. So, there you go. There's also going to be a billboard uh, download as well, so be sure to download the billboard links or else some of the section of the zoo will look a little bit different, a little bit funky there. Um, two years, it's going to be very blank and everything like that. So, cool. All right. I think that does it. I think that did it. I think that's done. So, cool. Hey, thanks so much, everyone. I do appreciate it. I am currently working on another new project at the moment, if you haven't already seen. It is a lot different than Thornton Hills Zoo. It's set in California. It does not have a budget, really. It has a budget, but it's like a really, really big budget. Excuse me, a really, really big budget, so you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, going really kind of modern, sleek. It's been really, really cool so far. So hopefully there will be a few, uh, like an introduction video for that very soon. Uh, get started on that new uh, unnamed project. Still don't have a name for it. Gotta get that kind of perfect name for it. But yeah, so no, but even though Thornton Hill Zoo is wrapped up and done, there will be another new project, much smaller scale. It won't be as big as Thornton Hill Zoo, but uh, smaller scale. But yeah, there will be some more uh, new content always coming out on the channel there. So awesome, mate. Thanks so much everyone for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Uh, this is your first time hanging out and you made it this far and you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe uh, again it's been a long time for you to hang out and not subscribe also hit the like button it does help out the video helps out the channel there so hey thank you so much everyone i really 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 appreciate y'all for uh, sticking with me during thornton hill zoo this entire time and yeah for thornton hill zoo and the channel and everything i guess we're signing off for this series and uh, yeah thanks again and we'll see you in the next one bye